right hand side yet again yes he's trying to pressure out the solo lane we saw him doing in game one and a little bit in game two his goal is to kind of just pressure out snowflake terra oh my god oh, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> brian codex out here soloing alfredo the support taking down the ADC, that's got to be a clip that we throw somewhere, man. Like that this. was absolutely bonkers. Alfredo not feel the global ult, but she's here despite that. And we might see Apollo oh, was... able to come as well. Oh, he the final basic as Kairos tries to finish it off with the dash, but Fuzzy Clay did this. But regardless, it will be a Primal Fury going the way of Fuzzy and the Wuzzies, and now over 10,000 gold up before 20 minutes into the game, and it wants to be even more important trying to chase out Kairos. It will be some peel, oh, but Fuzzy. joining in on the ultimate, gonna force out the ultimate from Kairos as well, and he might just get away, but it forces him to dash into a rough spot. Ryzen dashes as well, trying to get damage from the Tycho Drums, who gets taken out before he can get more than one shot off, but Alfredo finding himself a double kill, looking for the triple. Fafnir near low, triple kill coming out from Alfredo. He's going to look for the Quadra, getting low here, trying to find it onto the Artemis, but Double Mumble doing a great job of zoning him out and gets the dash to finish off the kill. Soul still alive, wants to put more damage into this Sobek and he might be able to finish it off and he does. Four members fall from Going Ghost, only three members on the side of Fuzzy and the Wuzzies. And, and I gotta say, it, it Goodness. Is room? Can you knock up? Uh, I have it in one. Damn. If we were all right, we could do gold. If I just killed Matt, too. So... Kill the Bacchus. He jumped? Yeah, he nope. jumped around me. Yeah, we don't, we don't have anyone else coming. He's gone. Just we can leave him go. Quick. Shit. Oh, just supports carrying games. I think that'll be it for the team fight. They're gonna try and back away and get away with their lives here after all said and done. Ooh, that was a very tentatively played fight, but it's not over yet! What, what are you doing that? there? What are you I'm doing there, Rack Attack? I'm, I'm glad you said it, because I was thinking the exact same thing. You, It's object permanence, hey. That kill, but now it's the gold tree started up again. It's being pulled, it's being leashed. Ragnarok is used, pulling him further away. And Alienation no. going to pick it up. All members of Dismay instead put their attention onto Demise, and the Gold Fury became free for the other team. Hill still not there, rolling forward. They want to guarantee the fall to get the trade. They do. Weezer's found a second kill of this fight. Radical finds the third one on to Vibe. And it's all on to Blizzado to try and get away with this time. Doesn't have his crystals available yet. And Weezer gets a double kill in the end. That's an overall four for one. And it looks like the Gold Fury as well. Massive turn for Alien Nation taking that team fight. And we. Greetings, Smite fans, and welcome to week seven of the Albion Giants League, the last week before playoffs. Uh, we have a, what is sure to be a barn burner of a set between, uh, over the, this is for all the marbles, uh, we're first seat between RFO and Wombats. Uh, I'm here with King Batu. Batu, how are you doing today? 
I'm doing really good, as you mentioned. First place on the line here. Both of these teams have the first and second seed all but wrapped up, so no real worry about that first round bye, but one of these teams is coming to this undefeated at 6-0, whereas Wombats are 5-1, and one, so very two dominant teams here, and this is our Legends division, so our high diamond, low masters division, so I'm expecting some great plays on both sides, and like you mentioned, a barn burner of a set for sure. Definitely looking forward to it. Uh, shall we get into picks and bounds? I think we should. Let's do it. All right. Uh, looks like Wombats will be in that first pick position, going to this and opening with a Loki ban. That's interesting. You don't normally see that top band in, over in an. In, um, what, what do you think about that? Uh, well, uh, I will say I am been trying to get into competitive again, and I've actually scrimmed against RFO, so I do know that their jungler really likes the Loki, and in that first pick, I don't hate the Loki ban at all. You have kind of your pick and choice of what you want to go for, and while there's a ton of assassins that are playable, I'd say all, if not most, are something that I would see viable, obviously pick comp depending, uh, but when you've got a character that you don't want to play against, you know the enemy team will play it. I don't mind it in that first ban. Some other bans that we've seen as far as the meta still staying in there, Ardu and Hell also banned out, um, but don't hate the Loki ban at all. Interesting to see if that's the only assassin that gets banned, at least in this first phase, probably will be, but maybe in the end we might see some more of the some of those assassins that are now coming with those OP jungle items that have come back. Yeah, we'll have to see um, what gets banned and picked in this first stage of picks and bans. The Uller ban and the Geb ban rounding up, those seem fairly standard to me, so one target ban and that Loki, and the rest of them seem to be relatively standard. Opening up with the Tiamat. Uh, still generally considered, I would think, to be the best mage in the game. What do you think, Batu? Uh, I'm right there with you. I, I think she's very much the top mage in the game. We don't usually get to see her because of that, so as much as I'm little bit curious to see RFO let that through. I'm also very excited as a lot of the team up play we've been seeing has been a little bit lower level where it's either, oh shoot, we forgot to ban that god, that's another one that exists, or uh, maybe not the most skilled play on it, so it is let through. Um, but I'm very excited. Interesting RFO going for this kind of, more just kind of their own style, grabbing the Hachiman. No real hunters seem to be dominating the meta outside of Uller, of course, who's just, if you saw SPL this last weekend of just... Uh, SOC, actually, I believe it was, where just Uller 1-2 comboed on a Titan and from 1 HP just was able to turn a fight with only without any HP. So uh, other than that, though, I think kind of the Hunters are all kind of very much around the same. And, of course, Cerberus, just with a lot of the healing we have in the meta, seems to be pretty predominant. It'll be interesting. To, inter another interesting point is Hachiman, not one of the ability-based Hunters, as opposed to we see the Chiron and Kepri. Kepri, one of the premier uh supports picked and banned in the SPL and Chiron takes advantage of the uh, ability based uh, ability based hunter builds that use those OP jungle items as you mentioned very well so a little bit of a different style coming out from Wombats a little bit more conventionally meta we'll have to see if uh, what RFO takes in response looks like they're hovering the Raijin looking for that mid lane pick there still I think outside of Tiamat probably the strongest and most consistent Mage we've seen while Tiamat's a little bit more towards that late game. Raijin has a little bit better early while still having a very strong late game. Maybe not as strong as the Tiamat, but overall during the game, you're going to have more chances at that mid lane to have an impact rather than having to wait 20, 25, 30 minutes or having to get fed to, you know, push yourself to those 20 minutes even earlier. Um, but I, I'm right there with you. Very unique drafts some very kind of niche things that we're seeing. But that's kind of the nice thing about seeing some of these higher level games to where they're not necessarily off meta, but they understand what they're comfortable playing against. They know what they want to play with and they draft accordingly, which makes it a lot harder to really pick a, you know, pick a draft that you favor. But also, you know, Tiamat, Kepri, Chiron, some picks that we don't usually get to see either from being banned or just not picked. Whereas the other side, Cerberus, Hachi, Raijin, some also picks that are usually either banned or not really picked either so I'm, I'm really liking i do think i got a favor of wombats here just with that tiamat kepri combo and i think like you mentioned chiron i think uses those ability hunter builds a little bit better right now yeah definitely we've seen uh for sbl fans we've seen big man things really pop off on tiamat and shinjo was undefeated on raijin for a long period of time uh 
jungle bands coming through. Lots of jungle bands coming through. The Raven and the Hunbats, uh, as well as my personal favorite jungler, Erlang Shen. And finishing off with the Sylvanas band. Interesting. So what do you think about these bands? Uh, Sylvanas band's pretty interesting. I think he is in a really strong place. I think he'll get even stronger once he gets... I don't believe it's hit yet. I think it's this Tuesday where he gets that um, passive change instead of level 20 down to 17 to kind of fit with those support items. Um, and interesting for me specifically because it kind of shows that they think the Cerberus is going to go into that solo lane um, rather than the support, which is where we have seen him, although he does have some flex potential. But right like you're saying... Right now, just kind of covering some base with these jungles. Hunbats, one of the best team fight junglers. Erling Shen up there as well. And, of course, Ravana, who, one of the best dive junglers, able to just backflip a lot of that damage. Not any specific damage she can do, as Tiamat and Chiron have a lot more of just considered DPS with their abilities rather than any sort of one big button that you want to have immune. But still, a very strong assassin. And just based on his kid, is really strong here. So interesting to see where RFO is going to go with it. And we do see the Achilles hovered. And that, that uh, Achilles pick does have some flex potential. We've seen layers taken into the jungle. And, of course, obviously, warriors definitely are in the soul in as well. So RFO seems to be hiding their uh, their hand a little bit, playing it close to the chest up against the Wombats. And Kamazots and King Arthur, well, I mean, you can't really hide your hand once you've got... once you're taking the last picks out of your five. Um... So, what do you think about this? Interesting, if you think Cerberus is going into the solo lane, well, I guess not anymore, right? You must imagine... Do you think that Wombats is thinking that Achilles is going solo now? Well, I, I think RFO, while they're trying to keep their hand open, it does kind of pin it because either this is going to be your front line, Cerberus in the support and Achilles in the jungle or in the solo lane. I don't really see Achilles being in the support role while you can, I don't think, in this kind of competitive level. It's, it's a little bit more cheesy. I'll just straight up say it. So I think it's not really going to be there. So it's either going to be both frontliners and you're going to be drafting your jungle here or it's going to be your jungle solo and you're grabbing your support here. Which, either way, you're kind of looking for that setup particular pick in your comp. And Achilles and Serb are kind of going to do the same thing. Serb's going to burn beads. Achilles is just kind of kind of run it down at whether that's run down to kill somebody. Full kit in the jungle or in the solo lane just exist and just not be able to really be peeled at all so really whether that's going to be a jungler that's just going to be more damage or a cc jungler like you would have a support it really kind of narrows it down for wombats to where you can really okay we're going to have to deal with this achilles and cerberus running it down and potentially either a damage or cc on top of that what can we do to get around that camazots does really well into the achilles can leap as well as go into that ultimate to get out from that achilles execute as well as the cerber assault so it has some good matchup there and then the king arthur a lot of that knock-up immunities with those spins has that mobility that can make that Achilles ultimate a little bit difficult. So both really safe picks into that Achilles, no matter where it goes, as well as the Cerberus. So I like these picks by Wombats. Synergizes really well. They do need to worry about this Achilles with that Kepri revive, but it's just individual characters. I think they're able to deal with this pretty well. Not to mention the Achilles execute will cancel out the Kepri revive. And Kabraken locked in last pick for RFO. Uh, are you thinking that's going into the jungle, or is it Kabraken taking solo then? I, though well, this for sure now shows for me that this is a Cerberus support. So maybe there was some that the Wombats knew that we did when they banned the Sylvanas, understanding that, you know, picking that, or maybe it was an oversight on their part, lack of knowledge of just covering their base, or maybe they just didn't know. So a little bit there on R RFO where they might have caught him there a little bit, but I can see both Achilles and Kabraken. I think I'm favoring the Achilles just because... I think physical junglers are just so much stronger right now. Achilles, with that passive, is able to get that little bit of movement speed and power, um, as well as just these jungle items. He has that, too, to give him that extra bit of CCR and power and everything that he can have. So it, I really like Achilles in the jungle. I know way back when crit was there, you could do the crit one shot, just two in auto somebody, and just do a ton of damage. Um, so I think I'm probably favoring Achilles in the jungle. However, I can see, honestly, kind of all three of these frontline kind of mixing around. Kabrakin could be support. We've seen some of the teams like to play that, although I don't think RFO's players will play it that way. But uh, overall, though, with these drafts looking here, I do like the Kabrakin pick, but I think I, overall, I think I'm still going to have to favor Wombats just looking at this 5v5. Yeah, I tend to agree. Hard to argue with a Kepri as well as a Tiamat being on the same team. Uh, but I think that's enough for our analysis. Let's see if we are right or if RFO will prove us wrong. Uh, let's throw it to Drummer and Frog uh, to bring us uh, to cast game one.
Thank you so much, Akira and Batu, for that analysis on the desk. I am Frog, joined by a Drummer on the desk, and I think they said it best. We have a barn burner here. These two teams have, have fought hard fought for six weeks up until this point, played with each other, developed synergy, developed their strategies, and they've chosen to bring these compositions out on, on game one of what may be the most important set for seeding going in to the playoffs. So, I mean, Drummer, what, what are your thoughts on, on these comps and how they're going to develop throughout the game? Well, it's going to be interesting to see, but first, uh, I guess I'll point out that we're seeing a little bit of a tussle in the duel lane here, just you're running the middle poking. Surpri I'm very surprised to see the Kabraken in the solo lane. Uh, I don't know. That, that was definitely not one that I saw happening, but and it looks like King Arthur has a slight advantage because uh, King Arthur decided to opt for the more damage-heavy start with that Bluestone Pendant right with the Chalice and the three multi-pots, whereas Kabraken seems to be a little more all-in on the defense with a uh, the Axe starter item and the uh, physical defense, just tier one physical defense. So... I think initially we're going to see, oh wait, maybe maybe King Arthur's luck has run out. Maybe an early gank here over in the soul lane oh, trying no. to get the first blood Spartan Slay will pick that up for his team. And you said that he may have the advantage, but maybe shut down early right there may be good for the Kabraken. Bro, I think if something, if you going into the game, if you know that your lane opponent is going to have the advantage, yeah, make him call for that jungler to come over and say, hey, you gotta come help me out, put the pressure on in the beginning because I'm gonna, I'm gonna struggle until late game, that type of thing. So, yeah, keeping him down, I mean, that does. Kabraken is still a level ahead of King Arthur, uh, which is right, they'd be fine because they just got him. So, yeah, if you think you're gonna have trouble, uh, call for that early gank. We're gonna see another one. We see a return kill and double kill from the Kamazots uh, to get them back. Uh, for that King Arthur kill. Just as effective as Spartan Slay was over in that soul lane, King Bop Up comes out and is doubly as effective over in that duel and picking up two for his team as opposed to the one. And I, I think that does bode well for this pressure in the duel lane especially. And I, I'm interested to, to hear your thoughts on this duel lane because I think Capri Chiron are two picks that we may have not seen a ton of prior to this patch, especially the Chiron, right? And I, I even expected to see a little bit more of the Chiron than we have been seeing, right? Due to the, some of those item changes, I, I felt that he would be... You know, similar up, similarly up there with Uller with the ability to build some of those flat pen items, and it looks like he has gone that Boomba Spear or Boomba Dagger, maybe upgrading into the Boomba Spear to have that effectiveness late game. But getting him a lead early on and maybe allowing him to have that pressure, I mean, I think it, it bodes well for that dueling and allows Kepri, you can see, already rotating early on. Yeah, for sure. Kefri, uh, we've seen Kefri banned a lot, so I personally haven't seen too much of Kefri uh, actually being played, but it's going to be good to see. I mean, we have a lot of, like, titans of their lanes in this game. We have both Tiamat and Raijin uh, going out for uh, mid lane and also Kefri in the in the duos. These are three pretty strong characters, I think, overall uh, currently, so it's been really fun to see just these the showcase of, of these three really strong characters going at it. Let me see up in the right hand side here king bop up trying to take that level advantage he's hit five right before spartan's play the log out's now here as well 3v3 on the enemy speed buff trying to secure it as a jungler should looking for the steal won't get it successfully but will use that batter to hell to keep himself safe it looks like no further aggression will be had over here an early involvement for both teams though trying to get that speed invade off not too successful but it might be alpaca actually under a little bit of trouble Spartan's play, we'll see if he has this link available. Does choose to go in, good stun on Rulot, looking for the Capri, does not have the ult available, not enough damage, and it might be King Bop Bop on the back line, cleans up Spartan's slay, and after a long engagement, it's Wombats out on top. Oh, and another kill over in Seoul, and this time a solo kill. Looks like Kabraken did have to burn the ultimate for it though, but hey, if you get the kill off of it, it's not a waste. Uh, I like the play from that, uh, from Kamazots there, coming in, saw that uh, Spartan Slay overextended it just a hair, and there was, and Kamazots was right there to punish him for it. Yeah, good rotation into the mid lane after that extended engagement near the speed buff, but that early gank onto the King Arthur looks like it has, in fact, given Chimp over here in the solo lane a good advantage, and certainly enough of an advantage to get that solo kill and now maybe trying to push it even farther gonna make king arthur choose between the wave 
for his blue buff. We'll get some XP from the wave, but it's going to be a blue buff invade here, at least in attempt, but members are coming from both teams. 3v3 could turn into a brawl here if they want to engage further. Blue buff still on the map. Now 2v3 as Camasots is a little bit late on the rotation. They do steal the blue buff away, but King Arthur's life might be next on the table. Good execute hits, but King Bop Bop's now on the engage. Achilles getting out with that execute second charge. Jerry Alpaca has room to rotate in. We'll see if he tries to commit here. A little bit hesitant as Raijin's following up right behind him. And he's forced to use the dash away. But more damage coming out. Fantastic ultimate from Chimp. Blocks that down. And Logout will pick up the second. And they're looking for the third. But Bop Bop finds it first. May fall for his troubles. It's Kepri. Still not able to use that ultimate. Used it earlier on in the fight. So Logout will pick out a double kill. And a big scrap gives a lead to RFO. Yikes, that was a rough one. Uh, going in, I mean, Kefri was trying to do his best there to help out King Arthur in that fight. Unfortunately, like you said, a little bit late on the rotation from their jungler, and they were able to get that 3v2 early pressure. Well done, execute, and escape from the Achilles. Now, Achilles did go down, but it was a 1 for 2 in favor of uh, RFO, so... Yeah, not a bad, not a bad encounter for them overall. I think they ended up uh, on top for that, now also uh, ahead in gold. And excuse my words, looks like Kepri actually wasn't even level 5 for that engagement, so not able to hit the ultimate because he, he did not have it available what well, will have it available for the next fight we can take a look at the xp charts here and the graphs are pulled up both gold and xp heavily in the favor of rfo for this stage of the game and where i see that the most i think is this solo lane and the mid lane i mean after that rotation we see a two level lead for chimp in the solo lane maybe one and a half as king arthur just takes over and Tiamat just ticked over as well, but this Raijin also maintaining a one and a half level lead right now. So I think having these two picks and especially these consistent fights towards the right side of the map is, is going to bode well for, for RFO. And I'm going to be interested to see if they're looking for this Fire Scorpion. And it looks like they will try to take this down early on, but actually they're going for the blue buff instead. Fair enough. Maybe the call might have been made uh, to not take it if they didn't feel comfortable with it at that point. It looks like we're getting some action over here around the blue buff a little bit, also a little bit around that XP camp. Uh, RFO a little spread out, but they're coming back together. Uh, Kamazot's opting to take the camp, chasing Tiamat a little bit. Tiamat getting stunned, hit again, throws out some of those. Oh, God, Kefri also off of on that time. Hopefully it doesn't expire. Or he's able to, oh no, unfortunately that could be waited out just long enough and the Kefri ult expired, not able to resurrect Tiamat. Might be Johnny under some pressure now. Execute, use, Spartan Slay will pick up the second fight in this one. And Bop Bop waiting on that ultimate. It's going to be the Execute trying to force it out and it does successfully. Log out, trying to get some damage on the Kefri, won't be able to help out in this fight after getting that first kill but it's spartan slay he wants more but he may have just secured his own fate but kepri out in trouble as well they'll trade one for one towards the end of that fight but overall a win for rfo yeah rfo putting on a good show for us when it comes to maintaining pressure uh unfortunately over in the duo lane just a back and forth nothing too crazy it looks like uh, Chiron and, and uh, Kamazots, the only ones that are ahead in level, it seems, on the side of the Wombats. Uh, but unfortunately, if that Hachiman is able to keep the pressure on just enough or be just enough of a presence in lane, Chiron really can't rotate too well without losing a, potentially losing the wave and losing a tower or even some back camps. But it looks like they're coming for the gank on the Hachiman here. Hachiman does not have his ultimate up, and he's able to secure it. Yeah, after getting that mounted archery forced out, King Bop Bop makes that immediate rotation. Good on him to be on that side of the map ready for it. And that may be the lane that RFO, or excuse me, Wombats need to be playing through. You mentioned the only XP lead that they have is towards that dual lane and towards the jungle roll as well. And typically that first objective we see teams fight over in the game of Smite is that gold fear on the left side of the map. Now, that Scorpion hasn't been taken down quite yet, but I can only imagine Kamazot's taking it down right now, I believe. Once that Gold Fury is spawning and they're continuing to look for those objectives, that may be the first large-scale fight over towards that objective where Chiron's going to be able to get involved and use that lead to his benefit. But we're going to see a blue buff invade and three members from Wombats on the left side of the map trying to match that out. Mike still not having that ultimate available. We'll get his beads forced using that abduct, but I'm not sure he knows Kamazots is here, and they may go for this tower dive. Three members on this side of the map. Hachiman is none the wiser. Waiting on it right now. They want to go for it. They may just walk through the tower. Bop-Bop wants the damage. Mike not having the dash available yet. Just off of cooldown. 
waiting for the snipes to come out and they will secure the kill having to force out some ultimates for it but they yeah, do not a bad trade idea. a kill for the blue buff so we have two coming in to try and maybe clean up we have a blink out of the cerberus leaps in uses it but he gets the abduct out of there pulls him away and perhaps sacrifices his life for the life of his teammates oh oh and they got the rajin very nice but then of course getting the kefri in return Still trying to push out the Cerberus, though, but Kabrakin coming in with a steel chair to take him off, uh, to get him off of his teammate there. And unfortunately, it looks like, yeah, Tiamat is going to also go down. So just a two for one in favor of RFO. Yeah, Paka maybe not getting the memo there as his team backed off and he went a little bit too far forward. They will get that purple buff steel off as well as they. That whole engagement started with such a long tower dive over in the left lane. And I, I think it's definitely telling and revealing of each team's strategy here as you see where they're putting their focus. I mean, we saw a four-man blue buff invade onto the blue buff of King Arthur. And on the other side of the map, at the same exact time that that's happening, you see three members of Wombats trying to put pressure onto Mike on this Hachi man. And I think that's really telling of where they want their pressure to be and, and where who, who they expect to come out hot in these team fights. Sure thing. I think that goes to what we were saying before is that maybe the call perhaps is to win through the duo lane, keep that Chiron in a lead, because that's where a lot of your DPS is. That's where your objective and tower pressure is going to come from, uh, is from that Hunter. So yeah, they're trying to keep it going there. I feel really bad for this King Arthur, though. I think his blue buff has been invaded, invaded at least two or three times. Uh, and that last one, that four-man rotation, we're actually able to take the Scorpion uh, the Fire Giant Scorpion as well. Looks like they're setting up for Gold Fury. They're destroying some wards, posturing a little bit, trying to maybe scare them away. But unfortunately, it's going to be a 3v2 unless Hachiman rotates in. But then they decide to make the call. They back off. They're going to just take some camps. They're not going to push this. But unfortunately, Arfo is coming in to this duo lane, looking for some sauce over here. Kefri going to the mid lane. So I don't know. I guess they walked over some wards. They know it's coming. But now that three... That three-man roving group of, of bandits here is just meandering into the mid lane, trying to put out some pressure. A little bit of uh, tussling over by Gold Fury, but no one's really committing anything just yet. Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely see both teams sort of ready to engage on this Gold Fury, but we see another engagement towards the soul lane. Johnny able to escape from that ultimate under his power, very close to being another solo kill for Crack Chimp, but Johnny able to get out just in time. and. This back may give him an opportunity to show up towards the Gold Fury side for his team if he wants to come over to potentially help with that. But we might get an engagement before he gets a chance to pop up in some trouble right now. Maybe forced into the ultimate, is forced into the ultimate, may try to turn it around, but actually going towards Raijin and log out looking for the damage. We'll get the dash, but the Kepri ult is better. Save King Bop Bop's life for the time being, but that's one ultimate down for the side of Wombats if this Gold Fury fight happens in the next 90 seconds or so. And we do see Tempo pulling it. Lock out on the damage as well. Seems like Wombats may be none the wiser for the time being, but they're sticking around, and King Arthur has shown up as well. Both soul laners on this side of the map as the Gold Fury starts to get pulled. Not falling super fast. Only down to 75% so far. Bop off is aware, and so is the rest of the team. The Log Out wants to get started. Dash in onto the back line. Capri, no ultimate available, and we'll look for Log Out trying to get the damage off. Tycho Drums daring through the enemy team. Double kill for Log Out. Another kill for Mike. Bop up fires back, but will fall just so far after, and Korvar may find his life on the way out, but this will definitely be a gold fury for RFO. Sure, that was a wild fight. The ults were flinging left, right, and center. Unfortunately, they were only able to get just one person, but I think that the Raijin got at least a double kill before he went down, so definitely made it worth it on that one. Their, uh, RFO should be getting, yeah, gold furies not long for this world. Hopefully, Crack Chimp looking a little low on health there. Hopefully, he wasn't taking aggro from that, but... Looks like he'll be okay. So that pushes the gold lead in the favor of RFO. They're a little close. Only looks like only about 400 or so gold lead. Or uh, four, sorry, 4,000 is that? Yeah, that's or close to it. It's, give yeah. or take. Um, but look at 9 to 14 on the kills. Uh, still all their towers and phoenixes for RFO. They're definitely looking pretty secure in this game so far. We're seeing a whole or a third item started over in the solo lane. Definitely a lot more damage coming from the Kabrakin since he went with that Void Stone, uh, whereas King Arthur just has his two full defense items and that Blue Stone pendant. I, and I think it absolutely, in that fight, was a question of which lead was going to be used a little bit better, right? We were talking earlier about 
the, the, the enemy team RFO has a lead, the red team has a lead in the solo lane, right? And that lead is matched by the Chiron over on the side of the Wombats, and which member of, of the, both teams is going to be able to get involved and use that lead to potentially give themselves an advantage in the fight. And it was clearly Crack Chimp who was able to get in there earlier. He, he was able to start the fight, had a fantastic ultimate to separate members of the Wombats. And, and Chiron, you saw he was the member that survived, but the only damage he was able to do that fight effectively was getting that Centaurus sh shooting through the enemy team. And, and he, he helped out on that Raijin kill, I'm sure, but him not being able to get that DPS off onto the maybe other fed target on the other team and, and Logout having such an incredible impact shooting those Tycho drums through the, the entire team. You mentioned he got a double kill right there. Absolutely critical for that, for that damage. But we'll, we'll see if they can make the same thing happen towards this Pyromancer as they pick it up. It seems like Wombats are aware. 50% HP right now. They may go for the steal, but interested more in the kills is Crack Chimp trying to get his damage off on a dirty alpaca. And they'll take out the Fire Giant. We'll see, or the, excuse me, the Pyromancer and we'll see if they want a little bit more, but won't have an opportunity. Yeah, I think it's critical now you're seeing when you're saying the, the Kraken being ahead versus the... Maybe pulling him under tower a little bit? No, he jumps away, okay. False alarm. Uh, I think overall what we're seeing right now is uh, Kabraken is, like, unfortunately, Chiron may have the better damage, but Kabraken is just much more of a threatening presence because he has the defense and the health to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with pretty much anybody on their team, and almost every one of his abilities has some sort of disruption involved. Uh, and even even once he blows all of his abilities, he still just has that passive, uh, providing those damage mitigations for his whole team just by standing there. Because, you know, if you want to go back to basics, Kabraken just has to stand there and his passive is working. Whereas once Chiron blows all of his abilities, that's it. His passive doesn't really work anymore, and he has nothing else going for him other than just some uh, some auto attacks. But it doesn't look like he's going super auto attack focused. Uh, so I think in the end, Kabraken is going to have the larger impact overall. I mean, if he's able to get another ultimate like he did towards the last fight, that can be so critical to separate the members of the Wombats. As not many of them are sporting jumps. It's really just uh, it's really just Kamazots, and then Tiamat has a jump, but has to utilize that stance switch to, to make it happen into a form that she may not want to be in at that stage of the team fight. So those Kabraken walls could have a, the potentially team fight deciding impact if they're placed in the right spot in, in a deciding spot. But as we take a step back, take a look at the builds, take a look at the gold leads, haven't been, hasn't been much action since that initial gold fury, right? We talked about a 4,000 gold lead. We're still at a 4,000 gold lead. We're still at nine kills to 14 kills. Although we have seen some item finished for both sides and, and you talked about this Chiron build and I'm wondering your thoughts on it not going into almost any attack speed just that crusher and it seems like he's going into the Titan's Bane now followed up by maybe a Boomba Spear for, for that extra damage it seems like he, he's going almost entirely ability based bro I mean ability based Chiron is, is I guess the way that you want to play right now because like they were saying on the desk uh, those ability based items are very very strong right now and normally Chiron plays really well into that but Unfortunately, like we saw, what we're seeing now is that it doesn't give him too much survivability, right? He has no life steal right now. The only life gain he's got going for him are any potions that he might pick up and the Chiron passive, which is some healing, not the greatest healing in the world. Uh, but if he's anywhere near that Cerberus, Cerberus has his passive and also that Pestilence that's going to kind of shut that healing down. Divine Ruin from the Raijin. So his healing is almost negligible at this point. Looks like they're, this Raijin might not belong to this world, but he gets pushed out. Hey, they got him. Okay. I mean, Dirty Alpaca under some more trouble. Great block from the from the Kepri and a good save onto his mid laner. And Spartan Slayer would get taken out on the back line. Two members so far down for RFO. And it's Kesar under the tower. But Crack Chimp might be in a rough spot as well. Ultimate expended and tower taken down. So no more damage from that objective. But King Bop Bop's low as well does not get the ultimate off and falls instead. One for two so far. Now we make it a one for three. Korvar putting out the damage. Trying to take out Nick by Tempo. As he's the only one stuck in the back line. May not have the jump available. Gets it off just in time. But Dirty Alpaca doesn't want to go too far. And it's a Centaurus through the wall. Korvar with a double kill. Secures his team the end of the fight.
Oh, that might be that might be the strategy for Wombats at this point because we are at about you know, 19 and a half, well, close to 20 minutes. Chiron level 19. Uh, that's where you get that end game, that late game damage, right? Eventually, there there is only so many protections you can buy, and unfortunately, the way the game goes is favor goes towards that penetration and percent pen because you're you can get 40 percent pen, and that always uh, is going to scale up very well the more uh, the more protections that. They oh, oh, a nice no. mounted archery coming in knocks Wombats off the Oni Fury. Not only are they off the Oni Fury, but it might be pulled in for even more damage as Logout trying to finish off Dirty Alpaca. But, I mean, they were on that objective, and, and Korvar was a little bit more interested in the kills as he tries to take down Mike, but it's actually Mike taking down him, and Logout still interested in the damage, but all five members coming back from RFO have it available, tries to go in, is Bop Bop, still has the ultimate available, will take down Logout, looking for the Gold Fury steal as well. <laughs> from King Bop Bop to keep his team in the game. He may fall at the end of the day, but what a play from King Bop Bop. That's crazy. Two for, unfortunately, a two for one in the favor of RFO, but that Oni Fury, especially at this point in the game, they're now they're even on towers. This is going to be a nice, they're going to hit a nice push there, a nice little cushion uh, of, some, of lanes now that have to be answered and have to be dealt with because those uh, Oni minions will push the, uh, will get that lane pressure in favor. Um, of uh, wombats and, and it looks like unfortunately though they're gonna be able to keep it out and yep they got a tower for it but still he has to answer that lane so it's gonna be like i said looking at a little bit of a cushion maybe some breathing room they can take a minute uh and kind of recoup yeah i, I mean I, I can't say enough about how critical that play was look at the gold lead right now it was four thousand for RFO, and, and not only have they cut it by 1,000 with that play, but they haven't increased it, right? They did not give RFO a chance to get that Gold Fury and thus increase their gold lead and let them maybe continue snowballing this lead. It's still anybody's game in terms of these fights. We've seen both teams have success with these four on five, four on four, with these small skirmishes, but we've yet to see huge gains made out of a straight up five on five fight i mean remember that engagement all started way back when they were able to pick log out out under the tower and then a massive play from ruelot keeps his mid laner alive that gives them the advantage to go even towards the gold fury in the first place but that all starts with a pick right we're still waiting on either of these teams to find a huge advantage in a straight up five on five Bro, and Kefri, I think, helps out with that because, like you were saying before, when he was able to save his teammate uh, at the, you know, the 11th hour type of thing, uh, if you're trying to look for a pick and Kefri gets that clutch ultimate off on them, well, that just took all of your all of your abilities and all those resources that you put in, and that just kind of puts them to waste. Arfo taking the Pyromancer, not the biggest objective in the world, but still uh, definitely helps the helps get the gold lead up. They do see King Bop Bop over here in the left lane, however, as he gets pinged down. It looks like they may use that to try and push down this mid-tier one tower, as you see three members in the mid lane, but four members for the side of Wombats will dissuade that, and it's Johnny trying to engage. Grabs Log out, puts him into the air, gets the Aegis forced out, but Kepri Ultimate not forced out just yet, still on the table, and both teams look like they'll disengage for the time being, as King Bop Bop may be answered by Spartan Slate. Already used a jump, still has the ultimate available. Bop Bop wants to disengage, and will do so successfully for now. Spartan Slate doesn't seem like he wants to be on the chase this time around, but may get persuaded by Crack Chimp. I don't think he knows members are still here, and we'll see if he gets punished for staying too long. Bro, that was a good play. I like it. They didn't gain, they gained very little ground in mid lane and got a free tier one tower, and it looks like a tier two tower at half health. And if no one answers that, it's going to go down because it looks like they're doing the old fire giant dance over here, but nothing happening just yet and a tier two tower down so now that dual lane is looking very nice in the fa in uh um, wombat's favor over there but under some pressure and will get taken down by mikhail that pressure over towards the fire giant was trying to be matched by rfo and it was successfully they'll get that pick and immediately turn their eyes onto the objective only three members here for wombat fire giant falling fast after frenzy gets top take my tempo taking some damage as well as mikhail forced off of the fire giant a gets a little bit too late and bop bop will be taken Taking out log, log out over on the left side, Phoenix, and he'll get this split push off successfully, but losing the fight on the other side. Corvar taking out first, Alpaca getting low, taking out another double kill for Crack Chimp, looking for the triple, but it'll Spartan Slay taking out that one. A Phoenix for four members on the side of RFO. 
yikes. I don't even know how to call that. Is that I mean, sure, a Phoenix is great. You've got that whole lane cleared now, which is nice. Uh, but now you lost four, pe you know, uh, four people over there, and they're going to get the Fire Giant, it looks like. So we, we're going to have to see how RFO plays this, because they have... That's obviously advantageous. You want that Fire Giant. It helps with sieges and whatnot. But again, having your entire lane basically run down by one player... I don't know. It helps shore up the gold uh, difference. It's a little, little closer now. We're only looking at about 2,000 gold lead for RFO. So they were able to bring that, cut that down in half. When we started, it was 4,000. But uh, yeah, well, I don't know. We're going to have to see how that plays out. Uh, at this point, I don't know whether that was whose team that was in favor of at this point. Because just because of all the gains, two towers and the Phoenix for just the Fire Giant? I don't know. Well, for right now, what we can look to is some critical item spikes coming out of these teams. Wombats obviously losing the Fire Giant right there, but two Boomba's Spears. Looks like it's going to come out for them. Kamazot's hitting level 20 during that engagement. We'll be able to finish his Serrated Edge and his Boomba's Spear. And Chiron, after falling there in that fight, is able to pick up that upgraded starter as well. And... I mean, that, that upgraded starter is typically one of the more damage creators in, in several of these fights, so I expect them to be putting out a lot more DPS, and it looks like they're confident enough to step up and defend these Tier 2 towers. It's only a regular Fire Giant is not an enhanced one for the side of RFO. Corvar getting some damage on to take my tempo, but we're waiting for RFO to engage. Looks like they'll group up here in the mid lane. Oh, it looks like it's going to be full 5v5 in the mid, coming in Kabrakan ultimate, trying to get some damage in there, but unfortunately they're able to get away. Not even, he's sitting there tanking that tower, hit after hit. Hopefully his teammates are following it up. Tower's about, you know, looks like just half to a third uh, left of its health. Minions, uh, minions coming in as well. Full fight, tower goes down. Oh, Kepri's able to get the pull. Under some pressure, and it looks like King Bop Bop under the same pressure in the back line. Both low HP. We'll see who falls first. And it'll be Take My Tempo taking down Rule out of deck. Kepriel does not get used on himself, and it won't get used on Johnny Kesar either. Two members fall for the Wombats as well as their Tier 2 tower, and Logout's not done. Wants to continue fighting this as well. Mikkel does not have that ultimate available, and so he will not be able to get some of that final damage off. But low members on the side of RFO, they still want to push this Phoenix. Mikkel getting some more damage onto Alpaca. They'll have this minion wave, and it's King Bop Bop now back to base with full HP, trying to take down Logout. We'll throw out some damage, but that Phoenix gets taken out super quickly, and Spartan Slay will take down Alpaca as well as he solo engages. May not be long for this world, but Bop Bop letting this Phoenix go won't be able to take down any members of the enemy team unless he tries to chase this, and it looks like he'll try and go in almost 1v5, 1v4 at this point. Spartan Slay will take down his life before he gets a chance to. What a misplay by King Bop Bop giving the enemy team an extra pick. Yeah, I think uh, Camelot's got a little too greedy on that one. Played a little too close to the sun. Probably kind of riding that high off of clearing the whole lane by himself and just got a little too greedy on it and they were able to turn around uh, right on him. But look at that. I mean, what a turnaround from that, right? Like they went from having a whole lane, being a whole lane down, just running it down mid, taking the mid uh, tier two tower and the Phoenix and, you know, essentially went unanswered by Wombats. There wasn't much they could do. They might have all been kind of earning around half health, but they just had that, using that item lead and gold lead and everything that they have built up so far, able to just push them out, uh, not let them take anything from them. And I think a big indicator in that fight, or a big difference maker in that fight, was the play of, of Rulot on this Capri. He, he's falling first, and I, I, that can't be a good look for me from Capri. He has so many ranged abilities in his kit, it's really just that abduct that can be putting himself in that bad position, but the fact that he falls before his soul laner, who's, who's more supposed to be doing the front lining in that front line, and then his soul laner also falls right next to him, but his, his teammates aren't able to get enough damage in. I mean, they need to be coordinating that setup, I think, a little bit better between the carries and the, and the tanks, right? Being able to use that abductor or use that CC from the King Arthur to set up a little bit more damage if they're going to have hope in winning these fights. Oh, for sure. I feel like uh, it seems a little bit like these big, these late game team fights. Arfo is kind of finding their groove. They figured out, you know what? That Kefri has saved his teammates one too many times. So now if they can, if he's even the slightest bit out of position, the calls we made to just punish him for it. Uh, and it looks like it's working out for them because if Kefri's dead first, he can't resurrect anyone. And then it's an easy, you know, it's easy cleanup from there. I mean, he was forced to use his ultimate in that fight just before he died on a full health Chiron. 
right? I mean, the ultimate got essentially no value, but he just felt like he had to use it before he died. But we will see if they're able to bounce back on this fire giant. It will be spawning as a regular fire giant, but will quickly tick over into that enhanced range. And this is an objective that if either team takes, I mean, any team can, can still absolutely win this game with this objective. It's such a powerful buff. Sure thing. I think it's slightly in favor of Aura folks. They do have a Primal Fury buff, uh, so they will get a little bit of an advantage uh, when it comes to this fight. But it looks like everyone's kind of dancing around, waiting for somebody to potentially make a mistake here and push up just a little too far, get a little too greedy, and hopefully they can grab a pick with it. Looks like every ultimate up for both teams, so this should be quite the brawl if they go in on it. It's just a matter of time at this point. So who's going to make that? Who's going to make that first step? And uh, who's going to make that first mistake? Well, looks like Arifo wants to go in first. They saw King bump up in the middle lane and knew that he wasn't with his team for the time being. Tried to make that engagement, but could disengage better. Disengage from the Wombats gets them out of there for the time being, and we will see the dance continue. But the more time that they waste on the map not doing this Fire Giant, the more time this middle Phoenix has to respawn for the side of Wombats. Yeah, true. They've got to start making something happen. Looks like they have uh, exceptional ward coverage around it. They, there is good vision, looks like, for both teams. Uh, oh, trying to Hachiman. Oh, nope. Had to waste a blink and a leap to get away from that um, for the uh, Kamazots. And it looks like, again, they're back over the Fire Giant, <laughs> waiting to see who moves first. Looks like the Raijin backed off to refresh that upgraded red buff, getting some more damage, hopefully, as they... Seem to be consistently grouping around this wall right at the Fire Giant pit. It looks like they're almost on the same page. Wanting to catch out a target and crack Jim feels that they've got it. Johnny K star down to half HP. Use the ultimate to try and get out of the range, but he won't do it successfully. And the Tycho drums will finish that one out, stepping up a little bit too far. And it might be Rulot making the same mistake. Already down to 75%. Sunder engaged on him. And it's King Bop Bop now in a little bit of trouble trying to take the pressure off of his support. But it might be Alpaca in more trouble from Spark. Spartan Slay, Crack Jim trying to push the envelope and will do so successfully. Helps his team take out the enemy support and Alpaca's next on the menu. Trying to chase him out is Crack Jim, but may not get it in time. Still a huge win for RFO and it continues to take down members of King Bop Bop gets into the ultimate just in time, but might not be enough to save his life if Arvo have anything to say about it. He'll try and hit the stun off the back, but Spartan Slay's been hit amping with another member, Corvar, in the front lines. Is They'll use this opportunity to take out the Phoenix, and now they want to end the game. Five versus two. Frenzy gets popped. No Fire Giant needed, even though it's still on the map. And Corvar's next on the menu for Crack Chimp. So is King Pop Up. Both members of the Wombats fall, and the Titan's next on the menu. 1-0 in favor of RFO. Wow, what a game. Uh, there were so many points in there where like, you were saying it could have gone either way. That critical fire giant, they could have helped out either team. But like you said, didn't even need it. They just pushed their, they had their advantages pretty much all game. I don't think there was a single time where I felt that Wombats was ahead of the game, except for that Chiron. But unfortunately, it just wasn't enough with both Chiron and Hachiman looking like very similar stat lines, but the Hachiman having a few more, or a good bit more assists uh, in the end. But what a, oh, what a tense game. Hopefully in game two, uh, they can turn it around. I mean, as, as we take a look at the, these end game statistics, I'm interested in your thought on, on maybe what the answer back needs to be from the Wombats in, in game number two. I mean, I, I completely agree. I think to, to me, the big difference, the biggest difference looked like over in the soul lane, Crack Chimp coming out 7, 1, and 20, not only having the same amount of assists as his support, but leading the gold charts almost, leading, leading the kill charts, and... and a stark difference to the enemy soul laner one eight and five on the other side and that all felt like it it sort of stumbled out of control snowballed out of control coming out of that first gank over in the soul lane from rfo i mean do, do you think they need to make a fundamental switch up here for johnny uh yes i think unfortunately i think the reign of king arthur has been over for a while now he was super dominant in soul lane especially on release he was absolutely disgusting and he continued being pretty good but they a little few item changes definitely took him out of the top and i think the biggest difference between the two characters especially coming out of soul lane is there's very little uh cc coming from king arthur like he can get one person up in his second uh like his charged up ultimate Whereas you have a Kabrakan who can stun, he can wall people off, he can tremble, he can do, just there's so much he can do. And again, that passive, he just sits there, 
just all he has to do is exist, and he's giving those uh, mitigations to his team. I also really don't like some of the item choices that King Arthur made, especially that spectral armor, when all we see is just a wind demon from the Hachimon. So a very, very low crit chance. In fact, going more for the... Uh, he has the kin size and the dominance, so going more for the hard just protection shred and that um, percent health damage uh, in the end. So I don't know... That was a weird item to pick there, so perhaps next time... Also, a carefree wind spectral armor, too. That's very strange, considering one crit item across the entire team. Well, we will see if Wombats can bounce back, or if Registered Flex Offenders can take this set to a 2-0 when we come back for game number two.
we're back from break. I'm joined here by King Batu. Batu, what do you think of game one? Oh, man. Uh, we, we were talking about it. You and I both called this set it would be a barn burner, and it definitely was. Um, some back and forth there. The one thing I do want to say, I, a big solo lane difference there in there just from that King Arthur kind of getting put behind early and then just wasn't able to have an impact. And looking at overall, just kind of stepping in a step back from some of the team fights and stuff, I think that was the biggest difference in this first game. Yeah, I mean, King Bop Bop was bopping on the Kamazots, but it just didn't uh, didn't quite translate into a win. Uh, it seemed like RFO had control. Like, they weren't necessarily, like, annihilating or it wasn't, like, super dominant, but they definitely had control of the game throughout, in my opinion. As we hop into PNBs here for um, for game two, RFO uh, in the first position, so Wombat selecting to take the second pick position and banning out the Kamazots. That's exactly right. What do you think about that one, Betsu? Uh, well, you know, normally I think objective secure is pretty easy, especially when you've got a Kamazot alt that's just he can only be up there so long, but a RFO apparently disagree with me that maybe it's a little bit harder to secure and he, like you mentioned, punning I'll join him. He was bopping. He was bopping out there so much. Uh, understandably <laughs> he has it twice in his name there. Uh, but on the other side, Wombat's understanding that they kind of got bopped too by the, not Loki, that they banned out by by the fat Loki, as the skin <laughs> that he has of Kabrakin going 7-1. and one. And just with those walls, they're able to have so much impact on those team fights and just really get a target for them singled out and really just not allowing Wombat's to really have a 5v5. Because they did. They got one in mid under their enemy T1, and they won it quite handily. But just outside of that, RFO really kind of dictated these fights and really just kind of decided when they wanted to win at the end. I mean, not to mention, Crack Chimp picked up that Kabrakin in game one. He picked it up last pick in the whole game. There was no time to adjust, and Kabrakin is one of those characters that you have to sort of adjust your pick and play style around. Like Odin, for example, another ban here. Walls mean you have to pick leaps, you have to build, you know, I almost call it Ghost Juice because that's what my friend group calls it Phantom Veil. Um, but yeah. What, what did you uh, say you guys call it? We call it Ghost Shoes for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Actually, I think it was Drummer who coined it. We all sort of call it Ghost Shoes. Hey, it's October. <laughs> I'm down with some ghosts here for the spookier months coming through. Um, but something not super scary, at least, is not as picks and bans go. Cerberus, first pick by RFO. Did solid for them in game one. Nothing super crazy, at least, that I saw. Um, no, had some decent team fight alts, and that's not to take away from them. Got the prot shred, got the anti heal, so you know, then really left open that I can think of that they might want to grab. So go back to what worked for you and rather safe pick as well. Yeah, I mean, I think even if you don't think the servers had an amazing like standout performance, definitely wasn't feeding, definitely was not you know giving up anything bad either. So, like you said, um, you know, just that sort of. Keep, keep the solid pick there, not easily countered, not, you know, immediately, uh, and yeah, not easily countered. But yeah, Athena and Kukulin, Kukulin, where has he been all these, uh, these I guess, months? <laughs> uh, w w under the, uh, the guise of, in the shadow of Vamp Shroud, I, I think, just to be straight up honest. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about this Kukulin pick after the game one where you have a pick that, sure, King Arthur's probably a little bit better in these team fights than Kekulun is. Kekulun's a little bit more early snowball-y, but you didn't even get that early game snowball into a Kabrakin who you can kind of bully out pretty easy. No CC immunity, really only has that, you know, root immunity on the one. Um, so really can get bullied out decently easy, but I, I, I'm not super fan. I am kind of excited to see this Athena. Haven't seen Athena a lot. She's kind of fallen by the wayside, even with Double Guardian being really strong. Um, and, of course, the damage you were taught doing that. But interesting to see. Does look like it is going to be in the support role. So, unless Wombat's thrown in the jungle. But I haven't seen that for since she got the damage on her taunt. So, I'm doubting we're going to see it in the... Uh, in the, Probably have it in the support. So, Wombat's locking in that front line. And RFO uh, going, looking like going to lock in their back line instead. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Athena is one of those characters that, in my opinion, just sort of always has a place in the meta. Like Hunbats, Apollo, Chernabog, bringing something that no other character can bring and that has to be dealt with, and especially global presence. Um, and, you know, the taunt considered, widely considered, often uh, cited as the best non-ultimate ability in the game. Uh, but Arful picking up Ho Yi and Raijin. Ho Yi! 
we see it, we're seeing a lot of Ho Yi picks in the SPL, and I'm just not seeing the character get that much success. What do you think it is about this character that has hunters going back to him? Uh, I think I think it's just with some of this ability scaling. You've got that too, where you get percentage more damage, and we're able to build four or five hundred damage. And I, I, you know, I was playing the other day, and I got saw saw a hunter just with the ability build hit two autos for nine hundred. Non crit, no crit items in the build, but just nine hundred just because of the sheer power. So I, I'm not personally great with Hoe, so I don't play him. I can't hit a bounce or even just the straight line ability that is that the one of the ricochet. Um, but I really like him. I think he's really good, especially now with some of these builds to where they're throwing maybe one or two crit items, maybe going like an ability crit, or even just some of the hunters that are just going straight auto attack crit, because by no means do I think that that, you know, Ikaval bow build is gone. This is just one of the other builds that is now kind of the wave, but um, I think hunters in a pot where they can build anything, and Ho-Yi with that passive means that you really can't build crit, just straight up. Yeah, sure, you might get one crit item, but instead of having that one auto that gives you the advantage it's the one auto that kind of loses you the fight because now you can't really get that extra bit of damage here but I i'm liking it it is definitely a high skill pick you got to hit your ricochet that's really your only damaging ability so it can be it can be pretty difficult especially with no cc immunity as well and into an athena you got the leap away you can kind of play around it if you're playing well but sometimes you got ping to deal with sometimes you just the you know you got blinks and other stuff so it could be a difficult matchup for sure also interesting to see the Raijin prioritized over the Tiamat. Now, I know Wombats did not have a great performance on the Tiamat in the game one, but still leaving it open for RFO, what do you think about taking the Raijin over to that? Well, I think the Raijin's probably a little bit better matchup, specifically into the Athena. You've got, um, you know, that taunt. Sure, you've got the channel to one damage that can interrupt, but you've got a leap away. You've got your ult where you can taunt and fear her, so that dash that she has that does take a while to charge up before she can go really can interrupt a lot of her mobility. So if she does get caught out, I like that follow-up. And where Tiamat, sure, you have CC immunity, but that's only in grand stan ground stance. And it takes a little bit to charge up. So you don't really have any instant ways to where if I Raijin ult, sure, the Athena might, you know, blink taunt or dash taunt. But if you can get that Raijin ult before and you've got your team around you, it's really easy to turn on that Athena. And after the first game, he didn't have the greatest KDA. I think he was 6 and 5. Don't quote me on that, but we're around that 5 and 6, 6 and 5, so nothing crazy. And the Tiamat did do more damage, but I think that Raijin had a bigger impact. That first gold fight where he's able to just down the bowling alley, hit a, just everybody in there, and just really being the only one died, get a 4 for 1 for his team and start that lead going. I do like the Raijin pick here a little bit more. Another reprisal for Korvar, who had a pretty decent performance on the Chiron. Uh, we'll be going back to that one. And then... Final bands here, Kepri, Nike, Merlin, Loki. Now, I understand three of those. Uh, what's the deal with the Merlin ban? Uh, again, I think it might be something that just is a good pick. Merlin, I think, right now has some great ability damage, and he's one of the hunters or the mages that I really can take advantage of going the Bumbus starter. Doesn't really need any particular starter. You can get the cooldown if you want. Gemma Focus, just because you can spam those abilities. So, like, he has some good advantage to all of them, but there's none that's, like, must-buy. Raijin very much is the, you know, either the Vamp Shroud for that bonus damage if you're going the Lifesteal build or the Conduit, and that's pretty much just all you need to go. You don't need the Sands of Time. Merlin, he can kind of flex all of them. So with this Bumba Spear that gives you 100 magical power as well as giving you that bonus damage against objectives, give you some, some nice sustain to where Merlin loves to burn these objectives. So I think he's very much underrated. Of course, doesn't have some CC immunity, so can be a little bit difficult and do a Cerberus, a Ho-Yi, just for some of that area stuff. But something else I kind of want to touch on here is this Chiron. Getting picked again, and I love it a lot more in this matchup. The big thing with Athena Taunt, as you mentioned, one of the better abilities in the game, is it needs some sort of follow-up damage. And a lot of times that's hard to get outside of your mid lane mage. But when you have a Chiron that can put that cleanse down, shoot not just the one ability, but get that guaranteed masterful shot too that'll chunk those backline. I think we saw in the game just that combo was doing almost half the HP of the backliners to where if you can get a taunt on someone without beads, maybe they don't die, but instantly, just off of three abilities, you have a half HP advantage on two of your people. So I, I really like it here. And of course, we saw it banned game one, this Robin getting picked up. Robin, I mean, Robin and Kukulin, those are dive bros right there. They're going to be making life difficult for Ho Yi and Raijin if they are able to, uh, if they're able to synergize. But uh, hands are back in Cthulhu. If we're talking about dive, there's few characters that can match the potential of Cthulhu just going in there to send into madness. 
and Nemesis also picked up by RFO. Interesting to see here, as Nemesis has somewhat fallen out of favor recently. A bit of a niche pick. What do you think about it here? It's... It, I think the biggest thing here with the pick is Nem is very much a counter to a lot of those tanky targets. Specifically Cthulhu giving you the bonus damage, doing percent health where Cthulhu in that Descended the Madness gets that extra health and mana is really good, but they've already picked the Ravana. Unless they, you know, flex the Chiron mid and run Ravana assassin, you know, like they, the, how they have, they, they can't just, they can't flex this around. They need a mage and they just wouldn't be able to flex around. So they've already got their assassin picked. Now, with that being said, I think Nemesis is still really strong. Ability Nem, auto, Hydra, you know, alt somebody, and then you auto, three, auto again. If you got Hydras, that's pretty much just any squishy dead. You've got that shield to make sure that you don't get in there. And of course, just the good clear. So you can also still go some of the auto attack items, go into that crit ability that we've seen as well. So I by no means am against it. Not exactly what I would have gone here, but I think you and I both as Jungle kind of think, not a bad pick, but not not my personal. So maybe it, maybe it is a personal pocket pick, but I'm interested right there with you. Interesting to see what this Nem does. Yeah, the lack of CC immunity may cause uh, that Nemesis some problems. And Kronos! Kronos mid? Where, where, where are we thinking here? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean... Uh, I'm not taking Corver off that Chiron after the last game. Top damage by a good margin. Played very solid. Not able to just have a full impact just with how some of the team fights went. But uh, I do like this for Dirty Alpaca. Was kind of in some of those fights the up with the front line. And so if you give someone who can basically, rather than get the Kepri ult, just re-ult yourself and be able to go to full HP again. Give yourself that second life. I like it. It is a little worrisome for me because there's really nothing to do with this Cthulhu. Or the Cerberus. Like, these front lines for RFO should be able to have a whole lot of impact. They're going to need some follow-up from their back line, which Hoagie, Raijin have some good AoE damage. Nem's a little bit more single target, but if you can blow up one-for-ones like the King Bop Bop was doing, like Spartan Slay was doing, you, you've done your job, and especially when you're into a team fight comp. But I feel like Wombats is... It's late game, and they didn't really get to play it last game, but if they can get there, I'm Athena taunted into Chronostan. I'm just destroying my keyboard having to deal with that on repeat <laughs> yeah you think well so basically i think if i'm hearing you correctly and i tend to agree i think wombats have the advantage if they do manage to take it past that 20 25 minute mark would you say that's accurate yeah but this robina and kakulin's really gonna have an impact and kakulin got bullied in lane the solo laner over there got bullied pretty hard he's going into a cthulhu that's not exactly the most gankable god especially after level five this is a lot that you're putting on King Bop Bop. He had a great game, but he just wasn't able to do enough in game one. If he can get you to the late game, I think you're golden, but that's a bigger to ask to ask than I think in game one. All right, well, we'll see if RFO locks down the one seed or if Wombats take us to a game three. Let's hear it, Frog and Drummer. Thank you so much, Akira and Batu, for that call. I mean, I think the picks and bands, looking at those and, and after game Number one, we see uh, some of the similar things right coming up from RFO that they had success with. I like to see Logout back on this ride, and I like to see back on this Cerberus from Take My Tempo. I think both of those picks come out and, and are very similar. Uh, you know, I think they, they played pretty well in those game, game number one, but uh, we see almost an entire redesign for the side of Wombats outside of this Chiron. It just, it feels like a, for not only different picks in just name only, but already different picks as they secure that first blood for themselves over in the duel lane. And it, it looks like it's already going well for them. That was, yeah, that was a fast, that was a pre, a sub one minute first blood, which is, got to do a number on your mentals there. I mean, you, you hope, you know, you, you hope you're pretty safe before the one minute mark, but apparently not. Tussling in the mid lane. Well, getting each other down, but nothing nothing too crazy. Nemesis has to back off. Raijin's probably doesn't have any abilities up at the moment. I often wonder if that Athena, I didn't, unfortunately we didn't get to see the kill. I wonder if the Athena uh, picked the taunt at level one uh, to see, to kind of lock it down, but that would be an interesting choice. Looks like, yeah, it looks like either the taunt or the three, but well, I can't tell she's level two now, but unfortunate, because that would be, that would have been spicy if she went with that taunt first. Uh, I will say, I like... Oh, sorry, go ahead. She's hovering near the mid lane here. Is that, I, I'm wondering if there is going to be some action. Does she have the blink? She does not. 
has the sprint instead, but it looks like she's waiting for the enemies to push up, but they may be more wise than that, able to maybe read it out or at least be a little bit careful as that likely gets called, but an engagement here on Dirty Alpaca gets the dash forced out from the Nemesis. Taunt back in, log out, gets some damage onto himself, but the bees get forced out, will be good for right now. As some damage gets exchanged, and I mean, this Athena so far is kill hungry. Oh yeah, no, I think Athena, I like, that's why uh, I say I like all of the changes that Wombats has made. I love Athena. I think her rotations are outmatched. I mean, that ultimate is insane in terms of just the, the reach that she has. You know, anytime, anywhere, Athena can always come in. I really like Kukulin. Uh, Built-in anti-heal in his one. His his uh, his transformation with two ultimates. Is, there's a lot that he can bring to the table. A personal favorite character of mine is Kronos. I would really, it would be, it would warm my heart to see Kronos uh, really pop off, especially in the mid lane. And it looks like that item, that first item he's building may perhaps be his items, the uh, namesake item for him, and may be a Kronos pendant. And that would warm my heart even more to see an ability-based Kronos. Yeah, we, uh, we, I think we definitely have not seen a ton of Kronos recently. He's, he's not popped out uh, quite a bit. And when we do get to see him in this mid lane, I, I, it's not surprising to me to see that ability base build come out of that day is what he chooses to go for. But a great dash from Korvar puts Tempo in a little bit of trouble here, and it looks like he will be cleaned up for yet another kill led by the duo lane. And it's Rulat and Korvar. Korvar having a fantastic game despite the loss in game number one, putting on a show on that Chiron, and, and they did choose to keep that pick for him, but did not get banned away. And I think if he comes out here and does a similar thing on it in game two, is able to take his team to, to a win, I think we may get see we may have to see it band away. I mean he he seems to be consistently already putting on a show for his team, getting two kills early on. Logout maybe accidentally canceling that ultimate, puts him in a little bit of a rough spot and will get taken out. He had the self heal for himself, but cancels that ultimate, I think, accidentally and puts himself down for the count. Not having the beads available will fall for the third kill in favor of Wombats. Yeah, they're really... Wombats is definitely... They've learned from their mistakes and they've come out swinging in this game. Uh, we saw... That was uh, some great prediction on that Ravna, knowing, being able to predict, figuring out where the uh, Raijin was going to teleport to and was right there on top of him. Yeah, it looks like, I think still may have been a mistake from Logout on, on that ultimate, but I still think, I, I agree with you, good instincts on King Bop Bop going for that blink. I mean, the fact that he's looking for those engagements, I mean, you gotta think, Logout was just at his red buff. He was doing normal mid laner things, and it was Bop Bop that was, you know, really looking for the potential to find those picks, maybe where the enemy does not expect it, and doesn't get the red invade, unfortunately. It's... It will be Wombat securing that for, or excuse me, RFO securing that for themselves. But it has been those two members, the jungler and the support so far, have been getting involved early. Is three kills on the board so far. We saw a little bit of a more aggressive start, I think, in game number one, if we saw ganks on both lanes. But canceling out that dash will not be able to, but the Centaurus comes out, hits one, hits two, hits three. Korvar from downtown secures that one. Uh, one of the greatest feelings on Chiron, hitting all three shots of your ultimate. It looks like yeah, he went the same build. He started off going with the, the Bumba's Dagger into the Jotun's Wrath. And we see Hoagie going exactly the same, too. He started out with that Leather Cowl and went right into Crusher. So we'll see. We definitely uh, ability cooldown advantage goes to Chiron. And he'll have his abilities up a good bit more often than uh, the Hoagie will. And yeah, these flat the penetration go down. Item. These fat penetration items has definitely been popular choices for the hunters ever ever since those trades. And, and they've been the same way for the junglers, except we see this transcendence once again gone into by King Bop Bop. He did the same thing on the Kamazots, and it did not stop him from getting involved early. As it looks like we may see him make a rotation here over towards the left side of the map. I think he may have walked over that sentry ward, however, and Nemesis coming up from behind him may try and catch him out here. Robin, none the wiser, waiting for his opportunity, will not find it and forced to back up instead. So what could have been an engagement forces both teams to back off. Going for the camp here. Still revised. Oh, Revive gets caught out. 
Oh, but he's able to give him the root, the leap onto him. He could be in trouble here, gets the ult, but he's able to ult away as well. So it's ult oh. for ult, and he saves his life. Yep, gets forced out right there, and Rula was in a I thought they may have engaged on him after the fact, but they spent a lot on that Ravana and do, do just trade ult for ult. But, I, I mean, I think ever since the, those kills in the early game, we, we've slowed down just a little bit, and it's it's just been ganks. But actually, Huyi jumping in here on the left side, both Hunters low. The ultimate does get forced out, and it looks like Korvar saved himself from a solo kill with that dash. Athena forced to expend the ultimate as well. Bro, but again, I guess if it's using the ultimate, but at least you can save yourself uh, in the long run, it's probably better. You don't want to give your opponents any of that lead. Uh, I was wrong initially. It looks like Kronos is going, or went with the Chiron's coin first, so he didn't go straight to the cooldowns, uh, but he just opted for. Uh, the penetration and the passive stacks for that uh, HP five and that movement speed. Yeah, and we still will get to see, get a chance to see where he goes from here. I mean, I think this item can lend itself to either build, right? He can go straight into rings after this and go for that attack speed and and go for rings that maybe aren't as penetration based. Maybe skipping over that demonic grip and going for the telekines instead. But he could also absolutely continue to go ability based, throw it to Hootie out there, maybe just a single flat pen item. I mean, there, there are definitely still options for this Kronos to go into. But I mean, as we take a look at this mid matchup, it's really interesting for me to see Logout specifically. It feels like he's not being as aggressive as, as he was in game number one. I mean, he could have made a rotation by now. He, he could have sort of made something happen and it seems like there, it's just been a lull so far for maybe specifically rfo after these early kills yeah they might they might be a little worried i mean it is oh and four in favor of the wombat sway we're over here seeing the in the solo lane seeing the ultimate come out of cthulhu pushing out but unfortunately uh Kukulin is just a little too tanky dirty alpaca going down to the nemesis and they're gonna get the kill on athena as well but ravana in there but got feared away and looks like they're going to disengage Raijin all the way out now. He does not want to play. Cerberus jumping away, getting the clap from the Nemesis, and that looks to be it. It seems as if they, they spooked each other a little bit and then decided to back off. But definitely a very different story over in the solo lane. Uh, Kakulin is a much, more, much more of a brawler than uh, King Arthur, I think. He's just, he has that passive damage he can get from his vent anger his anti-heal his leap his two ultimates he's just a a much more um active character in terms of how he can just get in there and deal a bunch of damage whereas king arthur unfortunately does lack a lot of movement unless he's just spinning and uh, i think that it's going much better this time even though Cthulhu we see with a one level lead but i don't think it's a whole level it's probably maybe half uh, so definitely seeing a much better performance out of the soul inner. Much uh, better in performance game. out of the soul inner and, and much closer, I think, across the board for, for both teams, right? We're not seeing that mid lane lead. We're not seeing uh, the jungler lead on, on the enemy team. Uh, either we do still see that half a level difference and we see yet another maybe half a level difference over in the ADC role. But, I mean, previously we were definitely separated in all roles, one or two levels here at this stage of the last game. So it's definitely been closer thus far as Logout will be forced to dash away, but manages to hold on to the beads for the time being. Smart of him to not get scared, more scared than he should have been off that Athena taunt at least. As we've continued to see not a ton of, of team fight or at least group action, it's been very much pick based, these four, these five kills total across the board. Gank based and, and you know, who comes out on top and who, who can get picked out, especially with this Athena taunt, which has been a major component of, of a lot of these fights. But now that this Gold Fury is available near the 10 minute mark, Looks like they may be grouping around this side of the map, trying to dance around it. Yeah, it seems like the Gold Fury seems to be a good one here. It would either, because right now there's a slight gold lead for Wombats. So if you're RFO, yeah, you want to do that, shore up that. And if you're Wombats, you want to prevent that from uh, going in. Looks like we saw an ultimate nemesis onto Athena, but that was just enough to get them away. That's uh, kind of, I think, in favor um, of the Athena there, because you just got Nemesis' ult for free. Didn't even really have to engage with it, so by the time she comes back to fight, that ultimate, the, the debuff from the ultimate's gone. Wait a minute, though. Fighting around the oracles, but again, nothing just kind of pushed them away. Do go successfully towards RFO, as both teams were over here on the left side of the map, and it was the soul laners trying to rotate over, but now it's actually a difference here. Kakolin rotating back towards the right lane, and Cthulhu, Crack Chimp, able to make a huge impact during the Gold Fury fights in game number one, 
is over here for the first gold fairy fight of game number two while Kukul and Slate will see if they can take advantage of this if they want to start the engage. King Bop Bop taking a little bit of damage, dashed in on by Crack Chimp. We'll get down to half HP and the immunity's already gone. Logout coming in on the right side. Nemesis chasing that one out and will get it successfully. Alt down for King Bop Bop as well as life down for King Bop Bop. Now Kukulin's part of the engage. Kukulin will get in there first and Rulot under a little bit of pressure. Does have that ultimate available if he wants to try and escape and will not get the chance to. Good taunts will keep him in place and Rulot will get taken down as well. Two members down for the Wombats. And it looks like it may be a third if Korvar can't get away here, but that dash will secure his life for the time being. And we'll see if they can take the Gold Fury off of the back of this. Yeah, I would say now's the time. It looks like the uh, RFO is going for it. You, know, you, you get, get a couple of picks, then just take it out. You know, you, you definitely have DPS for it, and the RFO will get that Gold Fury. Yeah, and it looks like the Korvar in a little bit of trouble. We'll get the secure on to take my tempo. Centaurus hitting some members during that Gold Fury, but Johnny Kesar falls in trade. Spartan Slay secured three members of the wombats during the last couple of minutes and he and his team secure the gold fury and a three for one yeah it looks like they turned it around a little bit there so now it, the kills are are one away four and five we have a, a very slight gold lead by uh rfo and wombats are still holding they're down one tower uh and now and uh now they're down a little bit in gold so well, we're seeing a little bit of a back and forth here, but it's one of the, I think, the important things to remember uh, is the later the game goes, the scarier that uh, that Kronos is going to get with his uh, passive buff. Looks like Logout's in a little bit of trouble. Oh, uh, he gets it away. Alt on the tower from the servers, but that might... Oh, and of oh, course, they would turn no. around and got the Ravana. That was almost bad. That I really thought the Ravana was going to get the kill in there, uh, but unfortunately, that tower damage was just a little too much, and he wasn't able to secure it. Yeah, almost bad for the enemy Ravana, or almost bad for Logout on the Raijin, but even worse for King Bop Bop, not able to secure that kill, and good peel from the Cerberus to not only save his mid laner's life, but guarantee him a kill. And it's a good turnaround there, trying to get the kill or something after that Gold Fury goes the way of RFO, but you, you mentioned the late game, and, and I think that while the Wombats do have a lot of late th late game things going for them, I mean, Chrono's passive is something that we can bring up, right? It, it literally, literally, the character gets stronger the longer you're in the game. There's no, it's not mincing words, or it's not like abbreviating to describe it as that. That's literally what the passive is. And, and so the longer they're in the game, the absolutely more beneficial they get. But it might be Johnny actually in a little bit of trouble over here on the right lane, forces the ultimate out of him and will get Nemesis ulted. But King Bop Bop here on the backside will try to save his soul in his life, standing a little bit in front, tries to get some damage on his Spartan Slay, but Logout will try and trade him in return. Gets the ultimate over the wall, but the dash will follow him and two kills go the way of Wombats. Well, a solo kill happened over in the duel lane. Bro, I think you're right. Kronos definitely, as the, the same before, as the game goes on, also looks like this is going to be a tier one tower in favor. Getting uh, Chiron getting that one down, which is kind of nice. A kill in the tower for two kills. Uh, not super even, but it's also not super bad. It's definitely, they, they didn't, didn't get a total loss there. They were able to bring some of it back. It's like again, a little bit of a fight in the mid lane, but everyone's kind of backing off. Nothing too, nothing too wild. Uh, but yeah, Kronos is going to get stronger. Uh, his passive is great. It's, it's like an actual seventh item, uh, similar to the way Nike's passive works. It just gives you, uh, it's a, effectively another item, which is always a, a good thing. It gives you an advantage over your lane opponent and everybody else's. You kind of get a whole extra item that other people uh, aren't able to get. And as he scales into the late game, I think it's important to talk about the late game prowess of RFO as well. I mean, it's absolutely, toward, as we get towards the 5v5 team fights, it may be the Wombats that have a small advantage with their comp itself. But, I mean, how do you think these team fights shake out for the side of RFO? Do you think they have the tools necessary to win a 5v5 team fight? Or do you, do you think they have to win the game in, in, in 30 minutes or less? Well, I think they have a very strange comp, right? Because you have Nemesis, who's extremely good at bursting down one tank, right? Her ultimate is huge protection shred. Uh, she has the slow from her uh, slice and dice, like, oh, and it just got Pyromancer. Uh, and you have Raijin, who is more AoE-oriented. Uh, and you have uh, Ho Yi, who's, who can take one person out, because he has, of course, his, his stun combo with the Ricochet, but his ultimate's very team-oriented is very team oriented uh so it's it's a strange one where you're not there's not a lot of single target damage other than nemesis so they're gonna have to make some really good calls here in order to not waste that nemesis all because it's gonna be so pivotal in taking down uh the wombats tanks whereas i think from the wombats i think they have 
a really good mix of single target, where you have, like, say, Kronos is very good single target, Ravana can do it, Chiron, just as a hunter, even though his abilities can hit multiple things, he does have his automatic hit ability, uh, which just kind of seeks out anybody that he marks, uh, and it's that beastly taunt that I believe at max level is a whole two seconds uh, of time where you either have to burn beads or hope for the best. So I give I give the late game slightly in favor of Wombats just because I think their abilities work a little bit better together. Yeah, I mean, we will see if they get a chance to take that prowess as we get towards the late game, 17 minutes in here. And the next objective we're going to see on the map fought over likely is going to be this Gold Fury, Primal Fury, respawning in about 30 seconds from now. I think it's a little bit too early to look at the Fire Giant unless the team gets a chance to sneak away from the other one at a time. But it will be these pings coming out as the Gold Fury respawns. And looks like the Soul Laners are on their way over. Kakolin heading in from base. Cthulhu on the way from the right side of the map. And will start out with this Gold Fury dance. But it looks like they may be picking it up earlier than they anticipated. Take my tempo. Tanking that already. 75% HP. Four members here. Four Wombats. King Pop up not in the vicinity just yet. 50% HP. But they're forced to back off. Johnny will take a little bit of damage. But Cthulhu looking for an entrance into the back line. Not getting the ultimate forced out just yet. And both teams hesitant to jump into a full engagement here, but it's King Bop Bop forced out and in, in a bad spot. Athena ult gets forced in and he will be taking out some damage here, but it's Take My Tempo grabbing Athena back into the back line. Sprint gets forced out, will maybe save his life for the time being, but Crash Jim forced into the ultimate. Centaurus comes through, getting some damage on the logout. He will be weak in the back line, but now maybe Corvus in a little bit of trouble. Not as much trouble as his teammates are in under the tower, though. Ruolot getting low, maybe finished off by this Cthulhu as he falls out of the ultimate at the worst time. Two members survive the low HP, and John making work of the back line of the enemy team as well. Who you will be forced to jump out, but we're waiting on that taunt from Mula and Spartan Slay. Still full HP here. They're on the chase. Wombats trying to find the enemy team here as they push down this dual lane, but it might be Spartan Slay in the rough spot beforehand. Turns it around on the King Bop up and has one more target in front of him. Korvar trying to get the finish off kill. Does not have the Centaurus available, but Johnny Kesar takes out Logout on the other side. Johnny Gaysar falls as well. Mikkel trading one back and two low health members from both teams. And Korvar trying to go in on his own. Will try and take down. Mikkel misses the first ability. And Spartan Slay will eventually turn it around. And Crack Chimp will secure that one. Rulot on the table next and will fall for his team. And Dirty Alpaca the final one to fall. A deicide for the Wombats. What an insane back and forth. That went from being the most lackluster team fight of everyone just kind of getting away with a sliver of health to a complete and utter turnaround by RFO here. I really thought when they first initiated that encounter, it looked like they weren't going to get anything off of that. It looked like they, hey, you know what? Hey, we got from the low, but everyone got away with a little bit. But then uh, Wombats just re-engaged. And unfortunately, that was seemed to be exactly what RFO wanted them to do. And they were able to turn around on get the entire DSI to take a tower. Uh, and it looks like they all back. They didn't decide to push that tier two or, or fire giant or anything, but they were also super low on themselves. So I guess they didn't want to push the too far ahead because the respawn timers aren't super long, but also aren't super short. They're in that nice mid range currently. So by the time you you pushed it, if they were to push an objective or something, I think they were probably worried about uh, respawn timers, everyone coming back and they were already really low. But it does look like they're going to go for the Primal Fury to get a little bit more uh, lead on the gold, get that buff and uh, be able to set up hopefully the Fire Giant and have that slight advantage uh, when it comes to the damage. And I think I have to give so much credit to Spartan Slay in, in that fight. I mean, not only did he stay through the first part of that fight and was able to maintain his health bar, unlike a lot of the members of his team, but he turns it around on a King Bop Bop. He stays alive versus Korvar, and then he comes back at the perfect time and turns it around on the Korvar and, and helps his team secure those last couple of kills and not only does that deicide secure them the tier one tower and left it also secures them the primal fury and it looks like it may secure them uh, the pyromancer but now we have to talk about this lead that they've amassed six thousand gold now are in the lead for rfo 12 to 7 in the kills xp lead as well almost seven thousand almost eight thousand experience for the side I mean, I mean if you're wombats at this stage of the game how do you fight back into this well, I think you first you have to hope for your, that your mental is still good because I can see after having such a strong early game, getting getting the Dia side on you like that has got to be pretty soul crushing at times. Sorry, uh, how far you had Cthulhu getting ultimate again, going for the Kronos, pushing him out. Kronos looks like he'll make it out of this one alive, but definitely scared. 
Uh, nope, and we have uh, Chiron getting on getting on the Raijun. Chiron made it back to, with that, but might not get it. Yeah, he was able to get taken out by Cerberus. Looks like they're also going to get the Kronos. Uh, unfortunately, forced to back uh, the Athena. Yeah, both Kukuri. carries fall for both teams, and trying to trade it back is King Bop Bop. He'll get one, but now they're under the tower. Crack Shift not done with this fight just yet. Blink gets forced out, saved his life for the time being, but taking a little bit too much tower damage has to get out for the time being. Johnny Kesar wants to continue this fight, waiting on some cooldowns, but both tanks will survive for the side of RFO as it's a two for three in favor of Wombats. Yeah, I think we're at the stage of the game where RFO is finding their groove again. They're, they've definitely figured out what they want to do and, and able to turn around those team fights. Uh, looking just at the builds for a second, I see that that is a Telkine's ring for Kronos, which initially we were looking for ability-based from him because he does have that Chiron's coin into the Soul Gem and now just one attack speed item, which I don't know. Yeah, he has his attack speed buff, as but I don't know if that was the best choice necessarily. I think an, an ability, another ability item, once you're that far down the ability-based path, maybe just keep it going. Maybe another cooldown item to get your ultimate up faster so that you're just even more survivable. Yeah, I mean, we, we were able, able to see him put out some successful damage in that fight, and I'm actually interested to see where he is on the player damage charts. Looks like he, he's a little bit low for the time being, but so is Logout. I mean, they're similarly down there in the damage charts right now, and, and I think that makes sense for a 23-minute game that has yet to have a maybe even 5-on-5 five -five fight. But it's really going to come down to this next Fire Giant. I mean, you know, may not, maybe not the game. We could see this game go on for 45 more minutes, right? But the reality is the next objective, big objective on the map spawning is going to be this Fire Giant. And as much as we see the Gold Fury fought over and there's a spat here or there, this is almost guaranteed to be a little bit of a dance, to be an interesting 5v5 team fight that all members from all teams are going to be here for. And it looks like they're already grouping up towards this side of the map. Yeah, it seems, yeah, it seems that Wombats are, are posturing for it. They, they definitely want to initiate on it. A couple of wards going down. Cthulhu getting in there, tussling a little bit. But now they're just kind of just kind of poking at each other. Nothing too wild. Uh, it was just tank versus tank, so we're really not going to see any big damage numbers. Going for destroying a couple of wards there to try to get the vision advantage. And it looks like we're just seeing that same old fire giant dance that we always see. They're waiting for somebody to step up. Cerberus a little bit out of position. I don't know if anyone saw. They might have been able to jump on Cerberus there if they if they had seen the call. But unfortunately, they didn't. A little bit of poke damage coming into fire giant from Hoi, but not too much. Again, they're just throwing abilities back and forth at each other. Uh, but all of them are kind of it's similar to what we saw before. We have the jungler in the mid lane uh, while the rest of the team dances around fire giant. And we do see neither jungler maybe standing near their teams, these teams for this fight, and, and this is maybe a, a you know signal of how they want to play these team fights going forward. King Bop Bop, we saw him in game one. There were a number of times where he as Kamazots was distanced from his team and trying to make his own plays solo by himself in the backline, and he had a fantastic he had fantastic success getting on to log out and, and putting him in a little bit of trouble, but it might actually be Rulot in some trouble early on. And we've continued to see Crack Chimp try and make these engagements for himself. Does not have the Kabrakan ultimate to lock players in like he did last game, but he's consistently getting in there, getting in the front line as he should. But engagement started off before Wombats are ready. Frenzy gets popped. Target is the Fire Giant right now getting low, half HP. And they may be forced off of it if Wombats are able to come in here, but King Bop Bop not here for the fight quite yet. Falling low is the Fire Giant. Rulot takes down Mikkel, and it looks like they're trying to steal it. They won't, but they may steal the fight. Logout falls, two members down, three members down for RFO. One member falls for the Wombats. It's a three for one so far, but it's just the tanks on the board for RFO. Gonna stop the jump for the time being for Take My Tempo. And Crack Chimps next on the menu. Good Taunt will keep him in the same place. Dash may force him out, but not enough of an escape for right now. And it's only the tanks left on the board for the site of RFO with the Fire Giant. And that's a significant victory, I think, for the Wombats. That uh, was huge. I mean, they may have taken... They, they got the Fire Giant buff and they got the gold from it, but three of their teammates are down. The only two or the only two people left with that Fire Giant buff are just the tanks, which, yeah, it's a nice buff to have. Oh, wait, is he going to turn it around on that Kukulin here? 
Okay, maybe. already got one kill here and maybe two kills in the team fight and take my tempo has to turn back from base right now Johnny Kesar a little bit low they're gonna look for the jump over the wall maybe if take my tempo doesn't hit that stun no and trying to get the final bit of damage off crack chimp waiting on cooldown and not gonna get the root in but they're gonna try and turn it around King Bop up here does get the damage off and Corbar now coming back from base low is the soul laner of RFO but good peel from the service will keep him alive for the time being until Corvar can come back and finish that one off take my tempo looks like he'll get out scot-free but maybe a little bit of an overstay for crack chip yeah it seems like they uh played a little too close to the sun on that one they had unfortunately lost three of their teammates so they lost that fire giant buff and we have the Cerberus, the only member of the team left with that buff so it's looking like yeah they get the gold from it but unfortunately that advantage that buff advantage to siege towers and phoenixes it looks like it's just gone now before i mean it, it was a great great play from wombats being able to stay in there and and take out all those and basically nullify that buff prama fury did go down uh in favor of rfo so they will get another stack of that buff uh, which will help them out, but uh, I don't know. If they keep losing the team fights, then that Fire Giant might not matter. And at this point, they've almost nullified the XP lead, right? The gold lead still exists. It's still at about 5,000 gold, but members are getting closer and closer to level 20. In fact, everybody at that level 20 except for the supports, but the supports are past the level where they get a chance to upgrade their relics. So everybody in the am has the opportunity to upgrade their relic at this point in the game once or their starter item excuse me once they get that enough gold as logout may return to base to upgrade to that gem of focus right off the bat and these starter items can be so impactful as we move forward in these fights we saw that fire giant maybe go the way of rfo but wombats win the fight but it felt like it wasn't a, a real fair fight i mean it felt like rfo was a lot more focused on doing damage and using their cooldowns on the fire giant than they were with using their damage and using their cooldowns on the members of the wombats so you know while wombats i think do take a victory from that fight I i'm still waiting to see a, a five on five fight where where both member or all members of the both teams are using their designed abilities on, on the enemy team as opposed to maybe Maybe they lose that fight because they're just putting the focus in the wrong spot. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you on that one. They did go for the, they did prioritize the objective over protecting their teammates. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm very curious to see how a full 5v5 knockdown drag out fight goes between these because there's a lot of really good, you know, five on five abilities, right? I mean, one of the greatest assets that I think RFO has is that Cthulhu ultimate, which is, you know, pretty crazy. Uh, in, in terms of how much attention it demands uh, from the enemy team. But we'll see. Hopefully we can see them in, because they're grouping up a little bit around this Tier 2 tower. We have all the members of Wombats here. Are they going to get the Cerberus here? They might. Throwing some abilities. Cerberus is able to get away, though, so nothing too wild. Uh, oddly enough, there's nothing. Ha this is the uh, both teams right here, even though there are no current objectives up on the side of the map. There's just a Tier 2 tower that they could go for. So I wonder, would you see the jungler Ravana going off in the mid, probably clearing a wave there to make sure it doesn't deal any damage to that tower? Uh, it looks like he's going to then go and clear some buff camps as the uh, rest of the members uh, seem to grab a blue buff and kind of posture around here. It looks like RFO waiting to make something happen. They all were kind of hiding by that XP camp, but uh, unfortunately they came back onto the tower and that's about it. Not much happening off of that. Fire Giant has fallen off now for Take My Tempo. Cerberus was the only one with that buff, but now the Fire Giant getting ready to respawn at this stage of the game. Looks like both teams are going to be over here on this side of the map, ready to have the dance once again. And, and I have to look at King Bop Bop in this fight. I mean, it, it was still a success from the Wombats the last time, and we might not get a chance to talk about that Crack Chimp engaging before his team gets a chance to get there. Tries to go on to Corvar, Athena Hulk gets forced out. Might not be enough to save his life, though, but it will be enough to take down Spartan Slay. Corvar still alive for the time being, and Cthulhu will be forced out, maybe forced into the grave out here in the ultimate land, but Johnny Kesar will be forced down first. Mikkel taking down that one, two ADCs, two kills so far in this fight and they will take down the tier 2 tower as well and will reset for the fire giant yeah that, that was a, a good encounter i mean we saw crack chimp doing what he's supposed to do is cthulhu he was just a big present that demands to be dealt with unfortunately nemesis went down but in the end it looks like they were able to get another tank uh with uh mikhail getting the uh Kukulin. and now they're going back in the fire giant about two-thirds health 
It looks like uh, Wombats are pushing out RFO a little bit there. Oh, Cerberus ultimate. Down from the Hui. Take my tempo. Tries to get the ultimate. Will take his own life. His Apaka falls as well. Two kills. Three kills for the side of RFO, though. Secures them the fight victory. Even if Rula doesn't fall here, a huge win for RFO. But I don't know if these members are high enough to do the fire giant. They're gonna give it. To, they're gonna give it a try. Yeah, they look a little low, but I definitely think uh, they're probably going to be able to secure Fire Giant here. Just I, guess I think they have the damage for it. Uh, Hoagie has to back out a little bit. Doesn't want to take too much damage, too much uh, aggression from it. But it looks like it'll be slow and steady, but I do not think uh, that Wombats are going to be able to get back in time. Still three members down, only tanks left, and they're pretty far away from this fight. And the Fire Giant will go in the favor of the RFO, this time with th uh, four of the five members getting the buff. They do secure that enhanced fire giant still only four out of five members as you mentioned having that one and interestingly enough it's take my tempo the one member who did have the fire giant the last time doesn't get it this time but it was wombats who, who still looked okay in, in that fight up until that point where everything turned around and, and it seemed like i mean to me it seemed like an even fight almost it, it could go either team's way and then all of a sudden out of nowhere the taiko drums from logout just rip through the enemy team and and wombats fall almost instantly i mean i think they have to do a better job of not grouping up for that ultimate sure or at least some better calls on when that ultimate is down and and maybe spread out a little bit i don't know but it, it is we're seeing a lot of there's that nice initial burst from that rajin he's got the obsidian shard and the soul reaper item so he does does do the health shred and has that 20% pen with the additional bonus pen on the first ability that he hits. Uh, oddly enough, it's still going in their ADC roll, still has one crit item, and that does apparently warrant a special armor from the uh, Wombat Soul Winner. Again, not sure if I like right that. Here. So much damage coming out. Corvar gets two already in the fight, and they have RFO on the back foot. Crack Chimp will fall as well. Spartan Slade not going to get a chance to survive here. It's a blink from Johnny Kesar will secure. This skill, I think, if he has anything to say about it, waiting on some cooldowns, Blink may get him out for the time being, but whether these two members fall or not, what a defense from Wombats. Yeah, it seemed like they just, it seemed like the RFO just had, I don't know if they were caught out of position or just not paying attention, but Wombats are just making some good calls and just playing really well as a team on that fight, and they really just turned around to the Tier 2 tower, and now it looks like they're going to start uh, pressuring out this Phoenix, and they're they're not there to keep it going. They're gonna push out this Phoenix, and they might be able to go for the end of a five-man ultimate from Take by Tempo comes out, puts them all low. Dirty Alpaca still low, will force that ultimate off, but Spartan Slay waiting for a line in does not have that blink to engage, and so the enemies of Wombats will be forced to back off, and it looks like they will successfully defend this Phoenix from those Oni minions, but. For the time being, it will be RFO struggling under a lost Phoenix and Wombat on the front foot for the time being. Still one member with enhanced fire giant as we look at the nemesis here. She did not die in that last engagement, but it really seems like Wombat's able to fight back in that defense. They just need to make some similar calls, some similar decisions in fighting back towards this next fire giant. Oh, guaranteed. If they can do that again, then yeah, I think they've gotten they got a pretty good formula for sieging down these towers and phoenixes. They just got to be careful around that fire giant. Yeah, and I think absolutely towards the fire giant here as members group up on this side of the map. RFO now towards the Paramancer will take this one out. They have those fire minions pushing down the left side of the map, so they have to be aware of that. Looks like Hui will back for that one. But as this fire giant gets ready to spawn, I think it's time to talk about the ideal fighting scenarios, right? We saw them falter on this fire giant the last time that they had the opportunity to defend this, and Wombats were not able to have a successful fight, primarily because Logout was able to sort of stay untouched, right? King Bop Bop has been able to get into the back line and get on top of Logout in some of these previous fights, but was not able to find success towards that fight. I mean, what do you think the keys are for Wombats here to really have a successful fight around this enhanced Fire Giant? I think that Logout uh, on Raijin is the priority for them because he seems to be making quite impact. I mean, he may only have four kills, but we've seen him use that ultimate uh, give us a master class on how to, how to get that ultimate in there. Oh, wait a minute. Tina might be in a little bit of trouble. Okay, she's able to make it out. 
another ultimate from Logout, but doesn't look like he's going to be able to find anyone. I think it was just a little bit out of range. We see Crack Chimp doing exactly what he likes to do. He's right in the mix, <laughs> right in the middle of that fight, five on one. He doesn't care. Uh, and Halo just pushed him out of the way there. We'll try to push members of the ultimate out to take my temple, take down Korvar. That's the only member to fall so far, but Johnny Kesar a little bit too far forward. Looks like he will take his own life as well, falling for the chance of RFO, and this might give them a chance to push down the Phoenix in the middle lane and maybe end the game if they want to be so hasty. Frenzy gets popped, Frenzy middle Phoenix will get taken down. We'll see if they want to continue, but instead just going to continue looking for these objectives. Right, Phoenix going to fall as well. King Bop up, looking for an entry in as Frenzy gets popped from the other side now. Looking for the Athena top four, man caught into the Who Ye ult. Will back them off, but Crack Chimp now in the back line with no ultimate will get taken down for himself as Dirty Alpaca does get that Kronos ultimate off, looking to fight back into this. King Bop Bop will get taken down, but Alpaca gets a double kill and Rula takes down another member. Two members left for RFO trying to take down Alpaca. He's pushed up maybe a little bit too far. The Kronos ultimate will not be available for the time being, and it may be Rula is pushed up too far instead, taken down, and it's only Alpaca now left to defend. But the members of RFO have to worry about defending their own titan yeah it looks like those minions just snuck in those firemen stuck in the back luckiest crits in the world from that ho Yi getting two in a row with only just wind demon I, I was pretty amazed by that those were those were they, some lucky crit chances in there but it looks like yeah they went three for three in terms of of kills but unfortunately yeah they got that left side of the map those firemen are just having their way with that lane and it looks like now the enemy team will get a chance to look at this fire giant. Wombat's take, trying to take this out before RFO can respond. Dirty Alpaca already has it down to half HP, and it's this double ADC composition that's enabling them to shred this so fast. Alpaca falling low, and take my tempos here, trying to steal it, won't be successful, and may fall as a result, but forced to jump out. We'll see if they try and get the chase on, but we'll choose not to. Instead, they'll just secure that enhanced fire giant. Yeah, Advanced Fire Giant, pretty big, but similarly to what we've seen in the other Fire Giant fights so far, uh, not every member of the team present for it or even getting the buff. It only have three out of the five for them, but uh, it's also the three good ones. It's the two uh, objective clear or uh, characters within Kronos and Chiron, so they're pretty important to have. I think that they're probably going to see more of a benefit than everyone else just because they're the ones who are going to be doing, they're the ones who are gonna be putting that damage on the uh, Towers and Phoenixes and objectives and all that. So I think... If I had to pick, yeah, I'd pick my two carries uh, getting the Fire Giant buff. Yeah, it's going to be those two carries and Johnny K. Sar on this Gakolin, who, who's made a serious impact in these last couple of fights. I mean, especially towards that left Phoenix defense, he was able to hit a number of members with that Gakolin ultimate, knocking them into the air and securing his team the victory, I think, for that defense. But it's actually RFO on this left side of the map, grouping up and potentially wanting to push this down. But it looks like they're gonna go for the gold fury, try and sneak it away from the wombats. Wombats are stuck dealing with these two phoenixes. Even though they have the enhanced fire giant, it seems like they may remain on the back foot, at least until these phoenixes respawn. Yeah, it seems so. I honestly think that primal fury in the, going the way of RFO, at this point, I mean, you're, you're all level 20, you're all at full build. Like, yeah, it gets you that buff, but, like, other than that, it's not doing too much for you, except late game, maybe you're going to get those um, 3,000 of those elixirs, perhaps, to maybe push it a little bit in your favor, but looks like they're waiting for something to happen. We have four people just sitting there, hanging out, hiding behind the trees, but it looks like they're going to opt to back instead. And it looks like Wombats will be smart and not push up for the time being, or at least push up alone, maybe too far into that enemy jungle. They're concerned with these fire minis, and I think this may be the smart decision. And I, I talked earlier about how this game could go 45 minutes. We could see these enhanced fire giants get traded back and forth, and that's exactly what we're seeing for the time being. Finally, wombats feel comfortable enough to push out enough to get this pyromancer, so they'll secure this small objective for themselves. But we get a chance now during the lull to take a look at some of these builds. I'm wondering if... If you see anything that pops out here, you know, I mean, is there anything that surprises you about these builds? And, and if, I mean, if now we can talk about this Kronos build choosing to go into yet another ring. So maybe half ability, half auto attack based as we end, you know, his build here. True. I mean, he has that Rod of Tahuti, which with its with uh, the passive item on that, it does benefit uh, his auto attacks a little bit. He'll deal a little bit more damage. But it's it's strange because he has three lifesteal items, right? His starter, the soul gem, and then that... Uh, ring and then just telekines and chiron's coins so he's got the 
the the penetration in there definitely, uh, but only one cooldown item. Uh, so not too much else with that. And going ahead with the lifesteal, I don't know. I personally would perhaps would like to see a little bit more, maybe another 10% cooldown or something just to, to get those abilities up much faster. Because that's, I think, where... Gets top tier. King pop up, taken down a little bit low, but Crack Chimp may be the one taken under the Spartan's play instead. That Centaur is ripping through the team fight. Corvar takes down the first member here, and they tried to sit behind that wall. They tried to set up an ambush for themselves, but end up losing a member and a critical ultimate instead. Bro, and like how we've seen the back and forth, like we uh from RFO, we've seen Raijin with his ultimate ripping through the team and getting like really good lines on that. But we've also seen the exact same play from the Chiron for Wombats is that that's uh his scenarius is just tearing through that enemy team. And by at this point, he has it looks like 30% total pen, uh, and then plus the bonus pen from that first ability used uh with Titan's Bane. So there's not much that's gonna be able to stand in his way. It's doing a ton of damage here, and they won't be able to secure the Fire Giant for themselves quite yet, as the Enhanced Fire Giant has fallen off at this stage of the game. But they're going to try and use this pick to push down a Phoenix. Still 20 seconds left on Spartan's play to respawn, and Johnny Case Far trying to get in there. Will blink in, log out already down to 75%, and 100% taken out by King Pop Pop. Crack Chip on the front line, but without that ultimate up available, he'll fall early on. King Pop Pop takes down a double kill and take by tempo. Now is the next one on the menu in the front line but that phoenix will be taken instead and they take those two members spartan slay does not spawn in time to protect that phoenix yeah that was some good calls there were key ultimates that were down in that fight and they knew the jungler was not going to make it in uh respawn and then make it to the fight in time to actually have uh, any sort of impact so they they made really good calls on the on the part of wombats there it was that was some excellent shot calling yeah, and then they use that it, they use that death timer i think to the t right there pushing down that phoenix and able to get two kills will enable them to have an advantage here in this fire giant fight it's still 30 seconds on crack chimp 20 seconds on logout and this enhanced fire giant is already on the table this double adc comp shredded it last time looking to shred it once again and take my tempo choosing to back off along with the rest of his team so this enhanced fire giant will go towards the wombats and i think they still want to clear out this tier two tower as they're pinging some of those buffs but uh, i mean they are in a prime position to try and siege down this phoenix oh definitely we're seeing uh, at this point now finally we have an entire team with a fire giant buff and uh they're looking to do it we've got at this point in the game Cronus's passive is fully stacked it's been stacked for several minutes uh they've got we're at full builds it's time to start shredding some some phoenixes yeah and they have the items to do it right all team members on both sides now have full builds at this stage of the game more than a hundred thousand gold acquired for both teams 44 minutes in 25 kills a piece we've seen this game go back and forth at different stages and both teams have had their victories and have had their defeats but at this point it's wombat securely in the driver's seat and They'll be even further in the driver's seat if they pick up this Oni Fury. And if they play this smart, they can have this Fire Oni Wave, such a critical impact to the Titan of the enemy team. If it gets there, they can have that Fire Oni Wave pushing down the right-hand side as they're sieging this left-hand Phoenix. Oh, guaranteed. I mean, that's a deadly combo with that. They have, they have Oni minions, Fire minions on one side. They're in a position now where RFO is on the defensive, even with their slight gold lead. They have to, to defend hardcore now because it's very possible that the minions run down an entire lane all by themselves with no help. Frenzy gets popped under the mid Phoenix. Johnny Kesar hits a double ultimate. Both the carries and a forced out of the fight, but Crack Jimp on the front line himself. Thorns gets popped. Phoenix will fall instead, and Crack Jimp down to half HP. He can't fight this alone, but it's the dirty alpaca taking him down. And two members now on the run. The Tycho drums may fight through the enemy team, and alpaca will fall in return. One member down for both teams. Take my tempo. Maybe looking for an ultimate here. As Corval will get low as well. Jumping into two Yi trying to finish off a lot but it's Johnny Kesar doing a lot of damage trying to make it sure his teammates get out and he will do so successfully but he'll fall in the process but look at these minions they may not realize this might be winning towards the end game they're still chasing the enemy team but this fire only wave is towards the titan this titan may fall too fast who are you trying to back in Cerberus as well Lil look like they may clean this up and a, a phoenix will be taken down but ultimately RFO stay alive
That was, you were right on by that. That was very, very, very tense. Those minions coming in at the end. I mean, they took, looks like, almost a third of the health off of that Titan just by themselves. Just walking in there and, and pumping damage out, forcing members uh, to, to back, probably unwillingly. They probably weren't looking to back at this point, but they had to. Otherwise, their Titan would be in a pretty, pretty bad spot. It still is in a rough spot here, already down to 75% HP just from those two waves. And they absolutely would have ended the game if Huyi hadn't gotten a chance to back. But we can still look at some positives for the Wombats. They don't get to end the game there, but they do get the Middle Phoenix. And they still have three members, including their ADC, with that enhanced fire giant. So I think they make the right call here as they look to group up towards the left side of the map. You can see three members already from the Wombats on the left side of the map. They still have this enhanced fire giant for a couple more seconds if they want to look to engage on this left Phoenix. But Logout caught out towards this red buff and will secure a pick for the side of Wombats. What a misplay from Logout. Oh, and they also got the Aegis, too. So that's 142 seconds where he will not be able to use that relic. It looks like we have a slight pause here on the side of both teams. Maybe somebody trying to reconnect here as we hold out to see this game. But now we can talk about what position the Wombats are in. 70 seconds as on Logout's death timer. And they have a couple members of Enhanced Fire Giant here. And we zoom up the current time here as they get a chance to push down this left Phoenix. And... Fire minions in both sides threaten the other two phoenixes and down the middle lane trying to attack this titan. Wombats waiting for the right time to engage do have this frenzy available. We'll see when they choose to pop it as it's only four members on the defense for the side of RFO. But Cthulhu goes in early on and Nemesis ultimate gets popped on the other tank. We'll take two members down but that phoenix falls almost instantly and they just want to disengage trying to leave is Wombats as they take those Phoenixes and wait for the ultimate to end and now they have a window in. Good Taunt will keep Crack Chip in the same spot trying to fall. Is the enemy team Centaurus tearing through the team fight as Mikkel forced to back off but it's the Titan on the menu now. Already down to half HP from the minions. Ultimate Force Frenzy pop Titan falls. We're going to game three. Oh my, look at like that again. I think you were right when you called them Winions because having two lanes pushed all the way down with Fire Minions is, is hard to, to come back from. So they, they were able to focus all their attention on the left lane. And like I said, they once Logout went down, that was it, I think. Uh, that was probably the crucial uh, pick there because he, like I said, he had a 70 second timer on his respawn that they had all the time in the world while, while he was just down. Yeah, and they were able to push that victory to where they needed to be. I mean, it was a long game, but ultimately they secured the dub, even after some, some you know, iffy team fights towards the mid stages of that one. So after a 45 minute barn burner, we're going to a game three. Still anybody's game, but we're going to toss it to the desk or at least toss it to a break, then back to the desk before we jump into game three. So stick around. You don't want to miss this one.
absolutely insane game two coming out of these two teams. Batu, what'd you think of that one? Uh, I think that you need to take this Chiron away from Corver, and that was an absolute back and forth game. Definitely in RFO's hands, where they should have, I think, won that one, but uh, just one too many mistakes there in the end game, and the longer the game goes, the more costly those mistakes get. Yeah, I was thinking we were wrong on the Nemesis because the Nemesis did kind of pop off, uh, but we were we were pretty spot on on the uh, on the late game uh, uh, favor for Wombats, and yeah, get that uh, get Corvar off of Chiron any way you can. If you're heading to pick some game pick some bands here for game three, uh, we see Camazots and Chiron two target bands coming out against the Wombats, uh, keeping them on things they're a little less comfortable on, and the Uller. Um, a little more standard uh, bands coming out from Wombats. Yeah. Arden, what do you think Arden, here, Arden, Odin, Gab, just getting rid of some of these front lines. Not really a whole lot that they pick-wise have dealt with. Like, the only thing that's been consistent has been this Raijin Serb. They've dealt with them both really well. And um, not surprisingly, looks like RFO is going to go back to it. I, I kind of think you need to change it up. Sure, he was having some good impacts. I know we saw those CG fans getting five-man team fight ults, but nobody else was alive or around. So it just really didn't have an impact uh, not a bad pick, but I, they need to change something as far as that goes. I think I need to see a little bit more setup for RFO. They're kind of freehanding a little bit, which is causing a lot of those late game mistakes. Yeah, though I mean I think there's an argument either way. And again, <laughs> which game yeah. are we in? Yeah, hi guys, is this game two again? Is this? Uh, are they just going straight back to the, the same top three picks? Yeah, Interesting. Might get a salt, mostly salt. No, okay, never mind. They're starting to go. Right, I, was like, right, I know we wouldn't get the Chiron, but <laughs> almost salty run back. But uh, interesting. Interesting. I mean, it, it's got to be said for Johnny Quasar though. He definitely had a much better performance in the Kukulin Cthulhu matchup than in that King Arthur Cabracken one. So, oh, and I think that made a big difference. A hundred percent. And just specifically in those team fights, we saw so many sieges where he would blink or leap in an alt, and then with the Athena taunt, just that those two combined CCs where you have the Centaurus alt and your Kronos pendant just free casting. Kronos, excuse me, not Kronos pendant, the item Kronos, just free casting from your mid and ADC where they turned so many fights, and RMO really didn't even get a chance to fight in them because two or three of them were already dead, and sure, Cthulhu is top damage in the game, getting so much off, but you have no backline to follow up with it and it just really affected i'm really worried though by rfo though still carrying that high execution comp with merlin and cupid both two gods with no cc immunity into this athena yeah i was about to comment on that merlin and cupid interesting pickup for the backliners here and corvar not wanting to get banned out anymore picking up the hachiman in the top three what do you think about these bands coming through or picks coming through uh hachiman definitely better into that lane and it's a oh, a lot of late game again from the Wombats. Athena, Hachiman, granted Kikulin, of course, that early game bully. But if there's going to be another pick that's going to be able to just kind of stall that lane, I'm really going to need him to see another game where he just fights in those team fights, lives long enough, works with that Athena to kind of let that back damage go, back line damage go. Uh, they did ban the Cthulhu, so that's a lot bet, and the Kabrakin. So we're going to have to see a third pick here from Chimp in that solo lane. So it'll be interesting to see what he goes. But also on the other side... The Camazots and now the Ravana band, so King Bop Bop, he's going to have to have a third pick of his own here, too. Yeah, I definitely enjoying these target bands, but the Loki let through this time? I believe that was a target band against Bop Bop in the first place, right? So uh, It was uh, banned once by each team. So oh, once by just, each team, okay. So it is kind of a strong yeah. pick. Interesting to see there. Nike, who we saw banned game two, and... There's the Loki. I'm assuming this gets locked in. I'm, I'm excited this gets locked in. It, it Interesting, okay. pick on, <laughs> Interesting pick on the Giannis. Sort of fallen out of favor since the dominance that Giannis had at the beginning of the season. But um, Loki, hard to deal with. Uh, and no detection coming out of Wombats, at least not yet. So invisible Loki running around killing your back line. We'll see if, uh, we'll see if the Spartan Slay is able to make that happen. Thanatos. Okay. I, I'm really liking these. They're both some serious high execution junglers, both very strong with some of the items just because th this is what they need. Some early game to get into that late game. Wombats have shown that they can deal with that messy late game. They've got good defenses. They've got good sieges. They just need someone to get them there, and that's King Bop Bop. And after the game one, after that really good game two, especially in those early games, 
I'm happy to put that on his shoulder. I think Thana is even better than the Ravana early. I do am worried, though, because if he doesn't get some beads pulled for him off this Merlin Cupid, he's just going to get buttons pressed in return, and you're a Thanatos. You're not squishy at all. I mean, it also means the, the the nice pick there is that the Nike Shield doesn't actually negate the uh, the execute from Thanatos. So uh, right before we hop in here, which which team are you favoring? Uh, I, I think it's going to be the same thing early here. You've got some good team fight here from the Wombats. you got the Rob, the be honest to kind of dictate when you guys want to fight when you don't athena for some global pressure that early game from thanatos i i'm really going to need to see this setup from uh johnny as well as um Rulot here to just do what they did in the first game set up their team to just execute high execution there get their back line able to do damage because if they can Giannis Hachiman, when they get that damage off, it's very funneled. It's in a direction, but if you can get that followed up off a taunt and a knockup, they should win these fights heavy. But is a Spartan Slam this low key? We'll get to see what all these bands are about. All right, RFO Wombats, game three for first seed going into playoffs. Frog and Drummer, take it away. Thank you so much, Akira and Batu. And I'm so excited for this game number three. We saw game number one, RFO looked dominant, I think, for most of it, able to take that in, in a relatively short game, right? Under 30 minutes, but Wombats in game number two. I mean, not only do they take it, but it's a grueling match, 45 minutes, and they, they are able to fight through and, and take it in, in the end as we get through. And yet again, as we move into game number two, we get some fundamental draft differences not this cupid coming out over in the dual lane haven't seen that pick in quite a while and two different junglers loki and thanatos coming out for these two junglers both of which we've seen had ha have a major impact in, in games one and two and both of them have tried to make things happen early and we may see a similar thing from spartan slay goes over here but i mean what do you think about these jungle switch ups Oh, I mean, yeah, I guess we're going to see what all the rumors are about and see this uh, this Loki that was, like, target banned uh, in the beginning there. But uh, I, I really want to see Thanatos pop off because I, it's been said that the scariest thing in Smite is a Thanatos that never misses a scythe. So we'll see how uh, how King Bop Bop is able to work, uh, work his magic when it comes to that. But overall, I like seeing the Cocoon again. I like seeing the Athena again. Those were both great picks. Into a Nike, though, uh, a little bit of a change from last time. As I mentioned last game, uh, Nike's passive essentially gives her team a seventh item. So we'll see if that little bit of an advantage that she can provide late game uh, pushes it in the team's favor. We may see an early fight towards the duel lane here. King Bop Bop waiting around the corner. Taunt will keep tempo in place and he jumps out just in time. But Bop Bop's not done. Needs two more basics. Won't get it. Good block from Mikkel there. Will secure his support. Saves his own life and that gank unsuccessful. Yeah, that initial movement speed buff from the Phantos, especially early game, that can be so devastating. It's extra penetration, movement speed, that because boots aren't in the game, we're not, not all the characters can contend with that right away. It's a, it's a huge advantage over uh, over your, your counterparts. And early gank trying to make it happen over in the dual lane, and they, they did have a lot of success over in the dual lane in game number two, but they, they didn't need ganks for it. This Athena, Getting that first blood early on and able to secure three out of the four kills was Carver or Corvar on this Chiron. But after that gets taken away from him in game number three here in the picks and bands, he, he's forced to go on to this Hachiman. What do, you, what do you think about the switch up for this ADC? Well, he seemed to be very, very dominant on Chiron. Like, no no question about that. Hachiron, a bit of a different play style, obviously. Not as much of an ability-focused character as Chiron was. Though it looks like the only thing he switched up here is his starter item. It still looks like he might be going for that Jotun's Wrath first item. Same thing and with the Cupid. Maybe Cupid's going to go, oh, never mind, kill in the mid lane yeah, uh, in huh. favor of Merlin. Logout picks that one up, and it looks like Spartan Slay was a part of that one as well. Taking out early is Alpaca, but Johnny Kesar gets soloed here, and Crack Chimp stays alive with the Sentinel of Zeus, but King Bop Bop may want to finish this one off. Trying to find the Scythe, but a minion will get that block off, so he'll just get the minions after the fact. But we saw a good blue buff steal from Crack Chimp over here on this Nike, and he got the blue buff steal, he gets the solo kill, and he's continued to dominate over in this solo lane. I mean, even in game number two where he didn't win the lane as hard, he, he's had a consistent leg up, I think, on Johnny. Yeah, Crack Trip his whole game. Oh, maybe not, though. 
no, he misses the sight and he'll get turned around on King Bop Bop trying to secure that kill and get the trade for his solo laner leads to an even bigger lead now for Crack Chimp. Oh my god, Crack Chimp, like MVP status almost on that. I mean, we, we've seen so far every the other previous two games, he's just managed to, he'll be 1v5 the whole time. He initiates fights all the time. Uh, we saw him control. Oh, wait a minute, Cerberus might be in a lot of trouble here. It's three on one. Yeah, take my tempo, forced to jump away. The taunt already expended, and Giannis over here, that's slow, and the finish off the unstable Vortex will secure that one. First kill on the board for the Wombats. Um, but yeah, so I was saying the, the Crack Chimp has just been quite the force, I and mean, I think he was top damage by a far amount uh, game two. He made a huge impact game one on that Kabrakan, which is constantly splitting the team up with his walls, stunning, providing all sorts of value. It looks like uh, Merlin is might. Oh no, Thanos found makes the way with the ultimate as Janus arrives to uh, put the fear of God into that Merlin a little bit. He will successfully get out here and heal off of this red buff, so no kill going in for Logout. He does only have one on the board from that early fall from Alpaca, but I mean, now we get a chance to talk about these mid laners and hold that thought, actually. Another blue invade coming over here on the right side. Johnny's a little bit hesitant to step in, and I think that's the right decision as he's two levels down here over in the soul lane. So I, we will go back to the mid laners as I really do want to talk about this Giannis pickup for Alpaca. I mean, in game one, we saw him play a, a pretty standard mage on that side. He played the TM ad, he wasn't able to do a ton on it. And then we see him come out and have some success on the Kronos, a very non-standard mage, right? Not a lot of Kronos being seen these days. But right. now we see him on the Giannis, which is yet another serious switch up, more of a utility mage in, in many cases. And, and how do you think Alpaca performs on this god? I mean, well, he seems to be com uh, they seem to be very comfortable with non-standard picks, right? I mean, yeah, sure, we saw TM at that was pretty standard, but Kronos mid is, I mean, is a champion for that one. I mean, I, you rarely ever see Kronos much less in the mid lane. Uh, and now playing Giannis, which is a very, very different play style. Like you said, more about utility, uh, mobility. His ultimate can get an entire team from one end of the map to the other very quickly. Uh, portaling over a wall or through a wall is pretty nice, considering... Uh, it looks like only the Nike and the servers can leap over the wall to, to chase him uh, if he were to uh, use that as an escape. So that's probably a point in his favor, but we'll see. I mean, I, I don't have any doubt we saw a good performance uh, in the second game. So I think we're going to see uh, I think we're gonna see some good things. Well, he certainly chose it himself. So he, he's at least confident in himself to be able to play the pick. But this is a great hover from the production staff, that Rod of Tahuti first item from this Giannis and going into that very expensive item right off the bat despite being one and a half levels down to this Merlin I mean he, he does regardless of his first fall initially he, he does absolutely want to get engaged early oh yeah I mean that Rob Tahuti is it's a risk as you were saying it's a very expensive item but that's a huge amount of damage coming out of him he gets the passive bonus damage when the enemy is low on health he gets the 10% pen, uh, a pretty monstrous MP5, and uh, a ton of, of bonus power off of that. So, yeah, I think uh, I think he's looking at. He may not have as many as much in the cooldowns department as Merlin does, but with that amount of burst that he's gonna be able to get. Oh what no! What a combo from Spartan Slay deleting King Bop Bop, and now Crack Chip wants to get involved in the fight, but Spartan Slay will lose his life. One in trade, jungler for jungler on both sides. Giannis Ultimate came through the fight, but Athena trying to get some more damage, and Crack Chip forced into the Sentinel of Zeus, but a great Cerberus assault will force members into a little bit of trouble here as members low on both teams. Ruelot may get taken down for the final one here. Double stun from Take My Tempo, and he'll take that double kill for himself as well. Trying to finish off Johnny maybe on the right-hand side if they can secure this final kill. But another kill happened over in the duel lane, and that may just be it if Crack Chimp falls as well. A skirmish on both sides of the map results in Wombats, I think, getting two and, and the other side getting two as well. A two for two, I think. Yeah, seems about right. But again, we've seen Crack Chimp just do what he's been doing all game. Just getting in there, fighting, brawling it out. Uh, just doing what he does best. But yeah, it, that was a good one that we were seeing a little bit of. Like last game, we saw some early aggression. Uh, from, oh no, is that... Is he in trouble? In a little bit of no? trouble. Okay. Play not with the ultimate just no, coming up off right. of cooldown. So he won't be able to secure that one. But... I mean, while that fight was happening over in the solo side, we saw Corvar take the solo kill victory over on that left side of the map. And so 
it, it looks like the Chiron, or at least not having the Chiron, has not deterred him from keeping up his level of dominance. True. He's been, we've seen in all three games, uh, uh, that uh, Korvar has been pretty aggressive and is not afraid to take those 1v1s and seems to show that that's where he seems to shine. Yeah, and absolutely having some success continuing to over in this dual lane, but... Taking a look at the levels, we still see Log Out with a one and a half, two level lead here in the mid lane, and now we see Crack Chimp with a very secure one and a half level lead still over here in the soul lane. And if if I'm not mistaken, this is pretty similar to how we saw the game state in game number one before RFO got off to their massive lead. Bro, it is looking it is looking very similar to the previous two games where we have kind of a back and forth start and then but at least currently what we're seeing is RFO is showing a little bit of a lead. They're definitely, they have the gold lead, the kill lead, uh, definitely putting the pressure on them. Looks like a rotation over here towards the left side of the map. That taunt will get onto Mikkel, but now it might be Rulot not able to dash, but it's Johnny's ultimate coming through the team fight, rips Mikkel off the map. It might be Rulot trying to be taken off now, forced into a rough spot, but able to dash away. That Cerberus ultimate won't be enough to gain his kill back on his team. And that through space and time absolutely rips through Mikkel and guarantees Wombats to pick. And that is definitely an advantage that uh, Wombats have in the mid lane is that... Oh, wait, we can see... No, he wasn't going to execute one. Okay. Uh, they have that advantage of having that ult that big ultimate that can go across the entire length of the map. Uh, it can you be used to do big damage to transport the team, where unfortunately, Merlin just has big AoE damage. He doesn't have that huge impactful ultimate. Yeah, and they do make an impact, certainly, over on that left-hand side of the map. That's the second time now Mikel has fallen. Korvar trying to make use of that lead that he had, similar in game one. He's the one with the lead, but it might be Spartan Slight. And a little bit of trouble here does have, does not have the ultimate, excuse me, as he's not able to get out of this one just yet. The Athena ultimate will join the Giannis over here as he's trying to escape. But two members low, neither one winning out on that engagement. Yeah, looking like... Two members of the Wombats, a little low, they're going to be backing, or one of them backing at least. More in the duo lane, nothing... Looks like Cupid being forced all the way back, probably going for the purple buff. And it seems like we have Hachimon just kind of out in the middle there. Uh, looks like the mid lane is there looking to engage with Athena and Thanatos. Perhaps, uh, now it's three on two. They could poke, they could press this, but Thanatos will instead secure that red buff. I mean, we'll get a little bit of a lull in the gameplay here, but it's actually Hachiman and Cupid maybe getting into engagement over here on the left side. Korvar was behind him for a little bit there. But it'll be the Wombats taking down this Gold Fury side Scorpion earlier on in this game. And it's been these Gold Fury fights in, in both games. These Gold Fury fights have gone in the favor of RFO. They've been the one that have not only been able to take the Gold Furies, but generally coming out on top of the fights as well. And they, they weren't able to close it out in game number two, but it's definitely here around this Gold Fury as it spawns at about 12 minutes, 15 seconds. As this Gold Fury objective spawns, I, I fully expect RFO to group up around this and, and try and fight into it and use their prowess, and especially now use their solo laner lead, similar to how they did in game number one, and try and take a victory over this early objective. Yeah, I agree with you there. I think at this point, you do have that Gold Fury spawn, and, and you're going to look to increase that lead. We see RFO already with a little bit of gold lead, and yeah, getting that Gold Fury <clears throat> just pushes them even forward into it. Right? The lead in solo lane, they have a gold lead, they take that Gold Fury, they're going to have an even higher gold lead. And uh, yeah, we've seen them before. They seem to be very good at posturing around these objectives. Oh, well, almost a solo lane fight, but they <laughs> backed off. And yeah, not on this side of the map quite yet. But uh, we do see members grouping up perhaps towards the solo side. It's Kakolin's tower almost falling. Should, well, yeah, it looks like it's on like one HP over there on the right side of the map. But we will now see the solo laners start to rotate, but only towards this Pyromancer. Picking up this objective, three members of RFO. Looks like Wombat's none the wiser for the time being and choosing to just go for these left Harpy camps. And it will be this initial objective taken off the map for RFO. Yeah, give it, that pushes their gold lead even further. They get that nice speed buff uh, out of the fountain. But other than that, not the game is definitely, this is a seems to be a much slower paced game than the other two, so far at least. 
Yeah, not as many kills on the board for either teams, but we do see a small gold lead, uh, you know, enhanced for RFO. 2,000 gold in the lead, but at 13 minutes, it's it's not going to make any big differences. Any item spikes happening so far aren't going to change the impact of how these team fights go. It's mainly going to be groupings, how these ultimate gets used, and specifically, I'm looking towards this Thanatos, who despite the fact that you know thanatos very known for his early game prowess starting off this game oh and two i mean what are you looking at thanatos to do to maybe get back into this game oh i mean the benefit thanatos does have the execute right so if if nothing else all his team has to do is get somebody low and thanatos can secure that kill uh not only two aegises so far uh on the uh rfo so that's three people they're you know clearly executed uh we'll see how that develops later we'll see if they change uh for the aegis or not but yeah i think at this point if you're thanatos you're ma not like whereas ravana is definitely gonna one v one oh wait a minute but there's Okay, ultimate out from Thanatos. Maybe we see the Spartan. first execute of the game here. And Spartan Slay will get re-engaged on, but that ability not able to come out the site. Still not uh, missing off the Spartan Slay. Will get the kill, but does get traded out by Corvar. Now Corvair on the retreat, as is Ruelot, but Alpaca will get taken out in trade. So despite that engagement coming out from the Wombats, they're the ones that end up on the back foot. And it looks like RFO now in a prime position to take this Gold Fury. It might be in a prime position to get even more picks if Crack Chimp wants to dive this tower. And it looks like he's going to. It looks like he's not going to be deterred by this Tier 1 tower. Still waiting on some cooldowns, but that first ability comes back up and will secure that kill for his team. Now it's Johnny in a little bit of a rough spot if he chooses to stick around on this one. But it looks like the other members of RFO are backing off and going to choose to go for the gold fury instead. Yeah, looks like that fire on the gold fury. It's seen it hanging out, not really just, I guess, getting the vision. And yeah, yeah, was tried to go for the steal, but unfortunately, that just didn't connect. That, that was a little bit of a close one. I, I, I saw her pop the third ability, and I, I was afraid that she was going to use the reach to try and steal it, and, and she, that was very, very close, I think, to, to a steal attempt. But unfortunately, not able to take that Gold Fury, but a four-man grouping in mid, they may be able to catch out Logout, forces the beads here in the mid lane, but they're actually heading towards the right side of the map instead, and, they, and they're not sure how they want to utilize this grouping. I don't think they can go for the Fire Giant here, but... They're choosing to go for the blue buff instead. Or is this blue buff on the right-hand side? Crack Chimp, while he does have the two-level lead, choosing to go in anyways. I thought he was going to hold off on this one, but he, he wants to fight. Gets that Sentinel of Zeus out, but already falling to low HP. Does get the beads forced out as well, and Thanatos into the air, waiting for the execute target. Through space and time, misses on both accounts, but Spartan Slay now under pressure as well. Thanatos landing in on the execute. Not able to get the kill, though, and Dirty Alpaca and him on the run, as is both tanks for the side of Wombat, but it's RFO trying to re-engage. Fantastic server result puts Dirty Alpaca now in a rough spot, and Ruelot may be next on the menu, taken down early on as Alpaca tries to come in, get some damage off, and a good portal will bring him to safety for the time being. And it looks like Wombats get out scot-free, but lose a member in Penance. Well, I guess if you have to lose one person, I, I guess the support is, is going to be that sacrificial piece that you get going because you, you do want your carries to be the ones that you don't want your carries to be behind. Like if I have to pick who gets behind, I, I'd probably pick the support. Uh, it looks like a bunch of ultimates committed uh, on the side of RFO for that. So they have no ultimates up uh, versus, well, unfortunately, just one on Rula and Rula is just now coming back into the game. They did try to push up towards this right hand side of the map and, and see if they could maybe take that speed buff away. But. Looks like nothing will come of it as it, uh, still fighting over here in the duel lane is Mikel and Hachiman. But another engagement onto King Pop Pop. The ultimate will come out and the dirty alpaca will be forced into getting that kill. But the second ability will secure it for him. And King Pop Pop looks like he's next on the menu of Take My Tempo can find the blink. But a counter blink saves his life for the time being and forces the Merlin Flicker to get out of dodge as he's low as well. Not able to re-engage in this fight will be the Merlin or the Thanatos. And they'll be forced out for now as it'll just be a one for zero or one for one excuse me yeah one for one that was the most unfortunate taunt uh from that athena that i really thought that was going to connect uh but then it seems that there was just a a few pixels uh missed on that one and Cerberus was able to get away yeah, i mean that was a very close one and a, and a very good reaction i think from king bop bop on that counter blink to, to be able to survive there 
instant scythe on a Merlin, gets him up to a, a good HP, and ultimately a good pick on Spartan Slay enables him to get, I mean, he's been back in this game. Despite being 0-3, he is the same level as Spartan Slay at this point in the game. And, and King Bop Up has absolutely been able to make a difference in these last few team fights. The Suns from the Ultimates coming out, despite the fact that he hasn't been able to find an execute target quite yet, he's absolutely been in the air and, and been a presence to help his team out in, in a number of these fights. But we're still waiting for the next fight to happen around these objectives, and we can take a look at the gold and XP difference. 6,000 in the favor of RFO and 7,000 experience in their favor as well. Looks like they may try and get a pick towards Mikkel over on the left side, but it may just be the tier one tower, and it may be the Loki towards this left lane trying to take members down if they stick around too long, and I'm not sure they know he's on his way. But maybe now they'll back off, and I think that's the smart decision. But Gold Fury may be the next objective on the map, spawning in just a couple minutes. Yeah, it looks like uh, yeah, definitely a Gold Fury can be the right one. But looking at that player damage at the top, again, Cracked Shemp in the solo lane, constantly at top damage, constantly fighting, uh, and just proving to be an absolute nuisance. Yeah, I mean, he has he showed off in game number one on the Kabrak, and he showed off in game number two constantly being in the front line on Cthulhu where he needed to be top damage in both of those games, and top damage in game number three to start off as well, and has maintained his two-level lead over in the solo lane, despite not nearly as many deaths this game around for Johnny Kesar. He's just been getting out farmed, he's been getting out rotated, and it's been an absolute presence from the, from the Snipey in a number of these fights, and Look at, I mean, she's zoning out these three members in mid, essentially, right now, keeping their focus on him, and they'll get the Pyromancer as a result, and he wants to keep going forward. Is Crack Chimp forced into the Sentinel of Zeus? King Bop Up already down to low HP, and it's actually Johnny zoning out the other four members of RFO. Will keep his teammates from being engaged on, but now it's this Gold Fury about to spawn. What do you think Wombats need to do to have a success on this Gold Fury fight? Well... They gotta be careful. If they, I mean, they could play for the steal. They could wait in the wait in the wings and and hope maybe a member gets low. Maybe they can get a good, you know, maybe a Janus ability thrown in there to steal it. But uh, honestly, I think what they gotta do is get more a uh, better target priority or, or shot calling on them to get that execute from that Thanatos. Because yeah, Thanatos has been a presence and, and done some damage. But we both fighting on the prim now fighting on the primal fury. Arfo engaging in. The oh, Athena gun and oh, Arfo was able to get it. Unfortunately, no steal. Hashima and Athena were just not able to get in there in time. And that shredded really fast. So one of the things Merlin is known for is that shred in his kit and getting out those abilities no and the frenzy gets popped early on. That gold fairy falls almost instantly. And another steal attempt from Athena, but not successful once again. And Arfo will increase their gold lead about out to about eight thousand gold ahead right now. And while it may not have made a difference in the items earlier, it certainly makes a difference in the items at this point. Jungle, Loki's a full item ahead. Same in the mid lane, same in the ADC role, only at tier two over for Hachi Man. But I mean, some serious differences here. And the main one that I see is this percent pen that Merlin's going to have over Giannis. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, Mer uh, Giannis only has 10% from that Rod of Tahuti, but Merlin's got, uh, does have both a Soul Reaper and that Obsidian Shard. So he's looking at, I believe, if I remember the stats, I those items correctly, that's 30% pen just by itself, and plus that additional percent uh, from that. Oh, no, they took that's right, they took the percent pen off the of Soul Reaper, so it's just 20% from the Obsidian Shard. But he does get that extra 10% off that first ability. Johnny in a little bit of fight. trouble right here, pushing, being pushed out, but it's Dirty Alpaca, but finally that execute goes off. King Bop Up getting a double kill here, two members down already for RFO and looking for more. Johnny Kesar on the back line, but it's Alpaca falling early on. Spartan Slays finds his way into the back line, taking down one member, but Crack Chimp in between a couple different members trying to make his sense known, and Corvo will take down his opposing support and what crack gym still in a little bit of trouble spartan splay getting in and finding another way in here and taking down another member but king pop up getting a third member of this fight trying to get the fourth but it will be corvar and crack gym that ends up falling for the final kill corvar and king pop up combined for the five kills in that fight yeah that was a wild wild fight that rocketed uh, Korvar up to number two in the damage. I believe he was just behind Merlin uh, last time we checked, but that was good. Now they're going for the Fire Giant. Very smart play. I think they have all their damage dealers, right? Or uh, two of their damage dealers, at least. And Athena kind of 
tank some of those hits. Looks like it will, Fire Giant will go down. They're probably, it looks like Athena and Thanatos, we've got half health. Athena, oh, Athena, oh, be careful. Oh, okay, and they're gonna get it, and Athena makes it out, which is a huge lead. I mean, the, the full Dia side, four out of the five people with the Fire Giant buff. Uh, most importantly, the only person to have it, just the Kukulin, which, again, if we have to make that decision of who doesn't get the Fire the fire Giant buff, I think the Soul Laner is okay letting that one go. You definitely want uh, your carries and your, your big objective pressure characters to, uh, to have that buff. And what a fight back from the Wombats over around that objective. It wasn't even supposed to be centered around the Fire Giant at the first place, right? I mean, that wasn't the objective that they were necessarily dancing over. It was more focused around that blue buff on the right-hand side of the map. But, I mean, they managed to take down all five members of RFO despite being 8,000 gold behind. And now it looks like they're in the driver's seat. That Fire Giant is absolutely going to give them benefits as they look to push down these towers. But... They won't be able to go for any phoenixes quite yet. All six towers still remain on the map for Wombats and, and for RFO, excuse me. And it looks like RFO, I think, are still having a good opportunity to fight back into this. Their Phoenix defense absolutely has a lot of positives to it. And I, I mean, do you expect them to see? Do you expect to see them fight under these tier twos? Oh. It could. I mean, we're looking at, uh, like you said, like Wombats, they have only three towers. RFO, still all six towers. They haven't lost anything yet. So at this point, if you're if you're Wombats, I'm looking to push a tower. You have this advantage. You have the buff. You know, yeah, you're still behind on gold, but you're, you've are you narrowed the kills. There's only a one kill difference. Uh, I mean, we, again, we saw Korvar again put on a show for us and show us how in those team fights he's pretty dominant. Uh, got the execute on Thanatos finally. Uh, and now, like I said, now I just think either you, you group up and get a pick here and go for those towers. A lot trying to engage early on, but Crack Chimp in the back line, trying to get a jump off, but no Sentinel Zeus quite yet. And we were debating whether or not they would defend tier two towers, but it looks like they want to put up at least a soft defense already on this tier one. But we're gonna back up for now, allow that objective to be taken and look at Thanatos on the right hand side, maybe trying to loop around. He's been pinged out though, walking over a ward. So won't be able to get the drop on the members of the enemy team. But Johnny Kisar is now transformed into this rage form. He wants to engage. Rulot looking for the taunt. Will take the tempo. And it's the Sentinel of Zeus ready on the trigger for Crack Chimp. Pops it early on. Will get sundered though. And he'll taken down almost instantly. Log out on the back line under pressure. Good Thanatos ultimate. And a better damage from Alpaca will take him out. But Spartan Slaves finds his way to the back line for a double kill. That assassinate will take down two members. But take my tempo. Will fall for the second kill on the side of RFO. Two for two so far. Crack Jimp under some pressure as well, but it's still Spartan Slight in the back line, finding the damage, gets a triple kill so far, trying to find more, but won't be successful. A three for three takes Fire Giant off of two members. My God, what a what an insane engagement. I mean, that that back line just shred I mean, from Spartan Slight. He was he was there, and then all of a sudden, we just lost sight of him, and then there he is, back in, just having his way with that back line. I mean, he, he was able to get in there, and that's been strength. And it took Fire Giant off of three members, excuse me. I thought Johnny K. Sar fell. He did not have it off the bat. But uh, it's just been Spartan Slay able to find his way into the back line consistently. That's the third or fourth time he's been able to do that, right? He used, you saw him, you know, standing around the red buff and waiting for an opportunity, and he uses that assassinate, gets two members stunned out in the back line. And not only is he able to get that double kill, but comes in when his teammates are on the verge of death and gets that triple kill as well. I mean, they save the, they, not only do they save the tier two tower, but there's not even any damage on the tier two tower in the mid lane. Through space and time, coming through here towards the Primal Fury, tries to dissuade them off of this objective and maybe get another even fight towards this Primal Fury as it spawns out. But Nicolin won't be able to join this fight quite yet in base for him. And Loki's not around either, so it'll be a 4v4 for the time being, no ult for the Giannis. Crack Champ doing a good job of zoning out, Primal Fury falling fast, looking for the steal, and he will get a Wombat steal away the Primal Fury, able to maintain that gold lead that they, or gold deficit that they have, but Spartan Slay takes down King Bop Bop in return as he finally makes his way onto the fight, and that Primal Fury may not be the biggest objective they're looking for, but it's Crack Champ wanting to get involved even earlier. Dirty Alpaca under some trouble, good, quick, Miguel will secure his kill. He's unable to go for the portal, and now Johnny Kesar under some trouble as well. Rulot makes it out, but Johnny will not. That tier two tower will get taken out, and the Phoenix is on the menu. 
Oh my, I mean, what a turnaround. They, they definitely went from a small fight, getting that stolen, taking the Phoenix. Are they, maybe they're pushing into the Titan room on this yeah, one. Looks like they're gonna- members they're... onto the Titan. Frenzy gets Frenzy. top. Titan already down to half HP. They're focusing on that objective. Crack Jim trying to get some kills in the back line. And Mikkel trying to do the final damage. Will Dash Boo looking to finish it off. And it's game three ending going in favor of RFO. Well, what a game that was. Much shorter than our previous two. They, I mean, RFO came in and decided they wanted to just end that game. I mean, we saw, I think, really the culmination of the previous two games of what they learned, how they felt out the other team, and uh, Crack Jim just absolutely putting on a masterclass and how to frontline that game. But uh, it was just really incredible seeing uh, just all of the things that they've done, all their strategies all coming together. Apparently the legends were true. Spartan Slay is an absolute monster on that Loki. Yeah, it takes him a couple games to, to make the impact that he wanted to make, but Spartan Slay coming through and just absolutely shredding the back line in those last couple of fights helped secure his team to the victory. And with that victory, RFO secures first seed going into the playoffs but that'll do it for here us on the casters i've been frog he's been drummer thank you so much for watching we're not done quite yet we're gonna throw it right back to the desk right back to akira and batu to break this one down Thank you, guys. There we go. Thank you very much. Uh, that was an incredible set to watch. Congratulations to RFO for tying up the, the one seed there. And um, But to, I don't know about you, but I have a suspicion we may be seeing this set play out again in just a little bit. Yeah, this was the final week, so RFO are able to secure the perfect season of 7-0, but... Not easily, I will say, especially in that last game. And a uh, 1-2 seed here, and as close as this game was, I'm expecting to see them in a couple weeks for the uh, finals for their division, see who comes out on top then. Definitely stay tuned as Albion Giants moves into the playoff stages of our uh, of our tourna of our leagues. Um, but we are not done yet for today. Uh, after a short break, we will be right back here with another set of desk and casters bringing you Disabled Table versus The Washed. <laughs>